What's up everyone, welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. This is gonna be my keyword research course where I put together a bunch of the videos that I recently published related to keyword research. You can see each of these videos below and you can see the timestamps. So you can quickly go to any portion of the video if you're just interested in something specific. These are all videos that I recently published to my channel. So if you've watched any of them, you're going to see the same exact content. But what I wanna do is put it all together in a course so if anybody hasn't watched any of these videos, they can easily find this and learn everything they need to know about keyword research for SEO, keyword research for Google ads, for YouTube. I went over some free competitor keyword research tips. So really anything you need to know about keyword research is going to be in here. And we are going to get started with my keyword research tutorial for 2022. In this, I start going over how to come up with a keyword list and some different strategies you can take in order to start building a keyword list for your business. So starting here, we're gonna get into how to create and organize your first keyword list for your business and how to actually group together different keywords to understand how they all work together. Today is gonna to be my keyword research tutorial for 2022. So I'm gonna go over the exact process I use to do keyword research and how to come up with a keyword list where we can start targeting keywords and topics with our content. So ultimately the goal of this video is to drive more conversions for our business by understanding what people are looking for on the internet when they go to different search engines. So getting started, I wanna go through my step-by-step -step keyword research process. Basically just four steps here. I usually try to find relevant keywords for my business and build a keyword list based on the products or services that I'm offering. So you need to really understand what is it that my business offers? Next, you wanna organize your keyword list into topics and subtopics. From there, you want to understand search intent for the different keywords and topics that you've come up with. And then last but not least, obviously, so we can rank in search engines and so we can target keywords with our PPC advertising campaigns through Google ads and other advertising platforms. We wanna create and consistently improve website pages that solve for search intent. So you might hear me say keyword intent or search intent throughout this video. Those are the same exact things. It's basically just understanding what people are looking for when they do go to a search engine and they enter a set of keywords. So next, in order to find keywords, what I like to do is go over some different keyword research tools that I like to use. I'm not gonna be going through any paid keyword research tools in this video. There are paid services like SEMrush. There are paid services like Ahrefs. So there's a bunch of different options out there that you can choose from. But I really want to go through some of the, my favorite free keyword research tools, or at least keyword research tools that have free versions. So starting at the top here, the Google Keyword Planner is my number one keyword research tool. Now it's not going to give you every single keyword that you're looking for. It's not going to give you every piece of information that you need. But using Google Keyword Planner alone, you can come up with an endless list of topics that your business can be targeting so that you're driving more conversions. Keywords Everywhere is a Chrome extension that I use. You probably will see it throughout this video and I'll show you how to use it as well. Keyword Surfer is another Chrome extension. Answer the Public comes up with a bunch of questions related to a specific keyword or topic that you enter, along with a ton of different keywords as well. Suval, so this is looking at some of the best searches on different search engines. And then Google Search Console is for after you've created content, after you put out these pages, you can see what keywords you are ranking for and where you can continue to optimize. Now five bonus tools in case you're looking for some additional information, KeywordTool.io, Word Tracker, SEO Ability, Keyword Tool Dominator, and Uber Suggest. So I'm gonna go through all of these throughout the video and show you how I use them. But what I wanna do first is I wanna get into step one here and with step one, I wanna show you how to find keywords and build your initial keyword list. So the way that I do that is with the Google Keyword Planner. And today I'm gonna to be showing you this for my website, farmhousegoals.com. So on this website, there's farmhouse decorations, you can see bedding, you can see furniture, lighting, rugs, shelves. So all sorts of different farmhouse type products. Basically anything you would put in your own home, I'm trying to find things that are farmhouse themed. So coming over to the Keyword Planner, what you can do is go to this page directly. If you've never used the Keyword Planner, you will need a Google Ads account. So create a free Google Ads account, and from there what you can do is just click on Go to Keyword Planner, and this will open it directly. I will put this link in the video description, and I will also link to every single keyword tool that I talk about in this video in the video description so you can easily find them. But if we open the Keyword Planner here, 
and you can see I already have this open so if you do have a Google Ads account go to tools and settings and underneath planning you're gonna see keyword planner and that will open up this page right here and usually what I do is I start with discover new keywords and I enter a list of keywords here that I want to expand upon for my own business so in my case for farmhouse goals let's just do farmhouse decor we could do farmhouse furniture farmhouse bedding farmhouse rugs and you can enter up to 10 keywords here usually I don't enter too many keywords we'll just enter five for right now now again you can always come back here and continue to expand your keyword list as you go so just using these seed keywords right here so these are all short tail really popular keywords it's gonna help me find a ton of long tail keywords that I can start to target with my own website so you can enter a domain here to use as a filter so using your site will filter out services products or brands that you don't offer but you don't really need to do that so usually what I do is click on get results here okay so after we click on get results if we scroll down here you can see it gave me 8,000 different keyword ideas so that is a huge number of keywords obviously we're not going to target every single keyword and some of them are going to be a little redundant but you're going to see our keywords up at the top here you can adjust location targeting language targeting you can uh, adjust the search engine here but usually I just keep these three as is because that matches for what I'm targeting and then it's going to show you the search volume from the previous 12 months so you have the option to adjust that as well over here on the right hand side you can refine keywords I usually start in the refine keywords here so you can see brand or non-brand I try not to target any branded keywords so I get rid of retailers here you can keep scrolling down they have other brands so a lot of these when people are looking for specific brands I'm not going to target them with my content I'm not trying to rank for when people are looking up Amazon or Home Depot or anything like that I'm just looking for non-brand keywords so next you can adjust different products rooms styles colors and others here all I'm going to do right now is remove the branded keywords so that only got rid of so we went from 8065 to over 7200 so we'll click on X here and open this up a little bit and now what we can do is as we scroll down you can add some filters you can adjust by average monthly searches so I can just say okay show me the keywords with the most average monthly searches so you can start to see some of those here what I like to do is add a filter and I try to remove some where the average monthly searches and you might want to do something like greater than or equal to let's just say 200 now you can adjust this depending on how many keywords total you have you can go maybe down to 50 maybe you want to go up to 500 or a thousand and just focus on some of these really popular keywords at first and then as you go kind of focus on some of these smaller keywords I will tell you keywords that get less average monthly searches are generally easier to rank for just because you don't have as much competition for some of these long tail keywords so let's just go to 200 here and then the other thing I like to do is add another filter so sometimes what I do is keyword text contains and I'm just gonna do farmhouse here just because I'm gonna get a lot of keywords here that don't contain farmhouse and I really just want to focus on those farmhouse type keywords now I'm down to a little over 1200 keywords you can keep adding filters here so maybe you want to do less search volume or something like that but from here what I usually do is I will just download this so up at the top right corner you can see here we can download this you can download it directly into Google Sheets I usually just download it as a CSV file whatever you feel more comfortable working with and you can see here this is the file that we ended up with so in this first column here it's gonna have all of our keywords currency it's showing US dollars I usually just get rid of this and I usually get rid of all of these different columns here as well so if you're interested in some of this data you know how much search volume by different months and you can look at actually average bids through Google Ads for right now I'm not really concerned with any of that I'm just looking at keywords and average monthly searches now keep in mind if you're using the Google Keyword Planner and you can't see the exact number of average monthly searches you need to run an active Google Ads campaign however you don't need to get too caught up on these numbers I would really just focus on if you do add filters such as over 200 searches per month that's fine and it will also already rank them by which ones have the most average monthly searches you're just gonna get ranges of data which isn't a huge deal so we have our keywords here we have our average monthly searches and this is basically how I build a keyword list so I'm just going to the Google Keyword Planner enter entering some seed keywords that I want to find some more ideas for and you can see these ones at the top have a ton of average monthly search volume 
So as we start scrolling down here a little bit, you're gonna get into these ones with about 100, and you're gonna find a bunch of different options here where you might not have nearly as much competition in search engines as you would for something like farmhouse lamps or farmhouse furniture. For example, farmhouse wine cabinet, 480 average monthly searches. So if I create a page on my website with the best farmhouse wine cabinets for sale, some different themes, some different colors, maybe some different design ideas, then it's gonna help me rank much easier than just saying maybe I'm trying to rank for farmhouse cabinets. So I know it's gonna be tempting to say, okay, well, you know, something like farmhouse lighting gets over 12,000 searches per month. I'm gonna go all out to just rank for that one keyword. A lot of times you're better off focusing on some of these keywords at the bottom as well as these ones at the top because they're gonna help drive as much traffic and you need a lot of keywords to drive a lot of traffic. So coming back over here, that's step one, how to find keywords and build your initial keyword list. Now step two, what I wanna go over is how to create a list of topics and subtopics based on your keyword list. So I've already started doing this, so we're gonna kind of fast forward through this a little bit, but I'm gonna close this out, and I already have a spreadsheet open, and you can see I've come up with some different topics, and if we scroll down here, you're gonna see my keyword list right here. So I've started to go through some of these main keywords, and what I've tried to do is pull out some different topics. So for example, as we scroll down, you might see something here like farmhouse front porch. I don't really need to see that as its own topic. That's a subtopic as we come up here of farmhouse porch. So if you see over here on the right hand side, I have farmhouse decor as one of my main topics. And then within that, you're seeing all of these different subtopics here as well. So coming back over here, you wanna create a list of topics and subtopics based on your keyword list. So if we come back over, you're gonna see over here on the left, these are all different topics for my business. Now, in terms of farmhouse decor, farmhouse furniture, it's all gonna be product-based searches for the most part. Now, there are some people looking for design ideas and things like that. So that's where search intent will come in, which is step three, but we're not gonna get there yet. So as we come down here, I'm gonna be doing a lot of examples on farmhouse porches, because I haven't created any content on my website about farmhouse porches. So I'm gonna show you how I would go about targeting that keyword. However, before I do that, the way that I do come up with topics is I'll look at my keyword list and I've gone through a lot of these already. So for example, farmhouse tables for sale, I don't view this keyword any different than farmhouse tables. Now it's something like farmhouse decor, you could see farmhouse fireplace decor, that would be a subtopic for me within farmhouse decor, but I would create it's my own separate page of content specific for fireplace decorations. Farmhouse Ottoman, that's its own topic in my opinion. Now something like Joanna Gaines Farmhouse Mantle Decor, I'm not gonna target that keyword because it has a brand in there. However, something like Farmhouse Baker's Rack here, that's gonna be its own topic. So I've actually set a separation here and you can see, so I've done a lot of these up top here, but as we come down, so Farmhouse Lanterns, I would consider that its own topic. Now it would be within Farmhouse Lighting, that would be basically the topic above this, but this is why it's important to come up with topics and subtopics, and you're also gonna have additional subcategories as well. So farmhouse lanterns, now you're gonna see farmhouse leather sectional, so that would be within farmhouse sectionals in terms of topics. So I would go up to the top, move this keyword up there. For right now, I'm not gonna be doing that, so we'll keep coming down. Okay, so we'll keep coming down here, and you're gonna see a lot of different people looking up dining tables, people looking up coffee tables. Again, those are subtopics within a larger topic, but farmhouse bathroom accessories, that's gonna be its own topic. So farmhouse bathroom accessories, and we'll do a few here, so we'll keep coming down. So farmhouse office desk, that's gonna be its own topic. And these are gonna be pages that I kind of view as I need to create my own separate page of content to make sure that I'm solving what people are looking for. Somebody looking for farmhouse lanterns is looking for something completely different than someone who's looking for farmhouse chandeliers or farmhouse bathroom lighting. So hopefully that kind of makes sense as we go through this because you're gonna see things like modern farmhouse desk. So I don't view that as I need to target this keyword separately too. I would view that as I need to target this keyword when I'm targeting farmhouse desks. I need to make sure I have a solution for people who are looking up modern desks. So we'll do a few more down here. So farmhouse shelf decor, I would wanna put within farmhouse decor right here, farmhouse accent table. So I consider that its own topic. Keep coming down, farmhouse mantle. So that's another one that I can consider its own topic. And again, you're gonna see 
coffee table decor, dining room chairs, recliner. So recliner, I would consider its own topic. And then as I do this, I basically just move these topics to the very top. So as we come up here, all my topics here, and we'll just paste it. So these are all individual things that I want to make sure I target with my own content, but I can also understand, you know, something like farmhouse fall decor would fit within my farmhouse decor category. So hopefully that all makes sense. I mean, you're not just looking at all these individual keywords and saying, okay, I need to target this one with a page. I need to target this one with a page. I need to target this one with a page. Because what you're going to end up doing is creating too many separate pages of content when it's not really necessary. For some, you can kind of look at it as an overall page that's going to kind of cover a lot of different keywords. And I'll show you why in a little bit. But for right now, step two, create a list of topics and subtopics based on your keyword list. So what I try to do is go through my keyword list and pull out keywords that I think have should really have their own page, that should really have their own solution. So it again, this is going to vary based on exactly what it is that your business offers. Because if I come back over to the keyword planner, and let's just say I look up keyword research. So in the Google keyword planner, I look up the keyword. So we want to make sure we get rid of our filters here. I get rid of them in a second, but let's just say I'm targeting keyword research. I click on get results. I need to get rid of these filters. So X out. Okay. So I'm looking up keyword research. You can see they give me some different things to broaden my search. But as I come down here, so we're looking at these keywords by average monthly searches. So Google keyword planner, I would consider its own topic within keyword research. As we come down here, keyword research tools, that would be again, its own topic but something like Google keyword search I probably wouldn't say okay I need to create a page about that as we come down here SEM rush login I'm not going to create a page about that keyword finder so you might say okay let me create something about keyword finder which is a specific tool that people are using now if we come over here and we just look at keyword by relevance you might see something like keyword tool keyword research tool that's the same exact topic you don't need to create separate pages for all of those Keyword Finder, that's again a tool that would be completely separate. So Suval, that's one of the tools that I'm going to go over here. Google Keyword Search, again, nothing I would target separately. SEM Rush Pricing, nothing I would target separately. So as you come down here, you're kind of looking for, okay, YouTube Keyword Research. That's a completely different topic to me than just Keyword Research because we're just focusing on one search engine. Keyword Search Volume. So again, that's a little bit different. That might be something you want to go after within your overall keyword research topic page. So by breaking these down into more of topics and subtopics, you can kind of get a better understanding of how you're going to organize your content and how you're going to organize your pages so that you are actually solving for the different types of search intent that you're going to come across as you continue to grow your business. So next is going to be number three. So number three, to continue on to kind of what we were just going over, understanding search intent for your keywords and topics. So I'm going to go through some examples here and let's just say we're talking about the Home Depot. So the Home Depot has a ton of different keywords that they target. If you just come here to all departments, you can see all of these different keywords here. So they have everything from appliances, electrical, flooring, area rugs, paint, plumbing. So all of these are completely separate. So their keyword research process will probably take weeks or even a month or more because you need to find all of these different categories and subcategories and let's just say for example i have a website where i'm selling dishwashers so within appliances i'm selling just dishwashers so what i would probably do is try to target all the different types of keywords that people are going to use as they go through the process of buying a dishwasher it might start with somebody who doesn't know what a dishwasher is what is a dishwasher so you create a page going over exactly what a dishwasher does, how it works, why it's beneficial. Now, somebody might be looking up best dishwashers. So you're gonna see 10 best dishwashers 2022 and a bunch of different articles that are very similar to this. Now, people might be looking up specific brands, Bosch versus KitchenAid dishwasher. And again, Bosch versus KitchenAid dishwashers, reviews and top picks. So maybe someone's just looking up the best Bosch dishwasher, the seven best Bosch dishwashers of 2022. So you can see it's hard to kind of create one page of content that targets all of these different keywords. So understanding what people are actually looking for, and you might even see something, somebody comes down to a specific product, Bosch 300 dishwasher reviews, 
and you're going to see the top ranking page are customer reviews on the Best Buy website for this specific dishwasher. So the more people kind of get down the process of the keywords they're searching based on what you're offering, you need to make sure you have solutions on your website for all of those different keywords. So that's step three is understanding search intent for your different keywords and topics. So as you come across different keywords, kind of knowing what exactly people are looking for and how you can solve some of their problems. Even if, for example, someone looking up what is a dishwasher, this might not be an ultra valuable keyword for you, but maybe you drive 10, 20 people to your website a month that are looking up more information about what a dishwasher actually does and maybe they eventually become customers. So the more that you can target, the more that you can kind of solve your customers problems all throughout the entire process, the more conversions you're ultimately going to drive. So understanding search intent, where people are in the buyer process, which keywords actually go to help you drive new sales versus which keywords are actually just trying to give people some more information, getting people to your website. So all of these can be very valuable for your business and you wanna make sure you're focused on all of them because the more information you cover, the better ultimately it's gonna be in search engines and when you're targeting for PPC advertising campaigns. So the next thing I wanna go through is, step four is using topics and subtopics to create pages that solve for search intent. So this is an important one because we've kind of come up with a bunch of our different topics and it's like, where do we go from here? So the example I'm gonna be going through here is we're gonna scroll back up is Farmhouse Porch. So I don't have really any content on my website about farmhouse porches. So let's just say how I would go about targeting this keyword and coming up with some subtopics related to farmhouse porches. Now the first thing you might wanna do, and this is where I'm gonna go through some of my different keyword tools here, is just search the keyword directly into Google. If you come to the bottom, you're gonna see some different keywords people are looking up, and it's gonna help you expand the content you're building. Now, a couple of the different keyword tools that I went over, the first one is going to be Keywords Everywhere. So Keywords Everywhere, you can just go to keywordseverywhere.com, install for Chrome, install for Firefox. It is an extension that's gonna show up on the right-hand side as you're searching. It'll also show on YouTube and other search engines as well. But let's just say we come to Google, every time I search a keyword, they're gonna come up with a list of related keywords. So these are some of the most related keywords based on Google. These are the ones that we just saw at the very bottom. We also see people also search for, so some of the different ways this search is used. And then my favorite part is long tail keywords. Ideas, swing, decor, lights, furniture, columns. So what I can do is copy this list, and then what I'll do as I'm creating content is create a separate sheet on my Excel spreadsheet, whatever one you're using, and let's just say I do farmhouse porch, and then we're gonna paste all these keywords here. So we'll get rid of this row right here and now you can see farmhouse porch ideas swing decor lights furniture so it's just another way to kind of come up with a bunch of different subtopics for our main topics now the next thing we can do is if we come back over to google is another one i like is keyword surfer so this is going to come up with more keyword ideas and some of them are different than keywords everywhere i would say i use keywords everywhere the most but what i do like about keyword surfer is this general generate article outline so if we click on generate article outline and we scroll down here, you can see they have some different things here of things we might want to cover as we go try to target this keyword. So 21 of the prettiest farmhouse style porches for your inspiration, 35 welcoming and beautiful farmhouse porches. So these are basically just headline ideas. But what I like about this is it's showing me exactly what people are looking for by giving me some different solutions for how to solve it. So someone who goes to Google and looks up farmhouse porch, as we can see from all these Google search results, is gonna get a bunch of ideas and designs. So that's ultimately what people are looking for when they're targeting this keyword. So that's why I like using this article outline because it's gonna tell you this is what people are looking for when they search this specific keyword. Now on the other hand, someone who goes to Google, this one's pretty obvious, but Google's farmhouse porch signs. You can see from the images, it's signs that would be on your porch, a farmhouse themed porch and some of the different signs. And now this one, you're gonna see completely different results. So Amazon, Etsy, kind of more of shopping results. So if I'm targeting farmhouse porches, I need to make sure that I'm doing a bunch of design ideas. If I'm targeting signs, I need to make sure I have a list of products for sale. So understanding that intent as you're targeting keywords is really important and it really helps 
as you kind of come up with, okay, which ones am I going to write their own separate pieces of content about? And for these, it's going to be, I would probably write a piece of content for porch and porch ideas. This would be the same thing. This would be separate. This would be separate. This would be separate. Furniture would be separate. And then what I would do is create a really good page of a lot of my favorite farmhouse porch furniture. And then I would link this page to my farmhouse porch ideas. Because ultimately what I'm trying to do is show I have covered the topic of farmhouse porch to its fullest, fullest extent. So if someone is looking up farmhouse porch swings, if someone is looking up modern farmhouse porch, if someone's looking up some ideas for farmhouse porch railings, all of these different things, I have it covered on my website. So when someone searches for farmhouse porches, they might say, okay, farmhouse goals has this topic completely covered. We're going to rank them on the first page. So hopefully that makes sense going from keyword research to actually your content that you want to rank and help you drive conversions for. Now coming back over here and kind of to finish off the videos, I just want to go over some of these different keyword tools and how they're used. I've gone over the Google keyword planner. I've gone over keywords everywhere and keyword surfer. Now let's do Suvel real quick because this is a very easy one to go through. So if we go to Suvel, all you have to do here is enter a search term. So we'll do farmhouse porch and they're going to give us Google, Amazon, Yahoo, Bing, YouTube, and then answers.com over here. Answers.com, not always the greatest, but you can see here in Google. So ideas, lights, swings, decor, Christmas decorations, columns, railing, furniture, railing ideas. Just looking at this, I have about eight different pages that I can create on my website. Coming over here, Amazon, I can see what people are actually looking for to purchase. So signs, furniture, pillows, swing, bench, Yahoo. With Yahoo, Bing, and Google, you're gonna get a lot of the same ideas. But what you can do is click right here and download all of this information and then use this as well as you come up with your topics and subtopics. So the next one is going to be answer the public. So same thing, you only get a few searches per day for answer the public. It's either two or three but usually I don't use it too often, but if I'm doing something like farmhouse porch, okay, they gave me 188 results. You can download this as a CSV file as well. So they have this visualization here. So I kind of tend to look for just the data. So they'll look at different ways that people have asked questions related to farmhouse porches. So who, what, when, where, why, how, not a ton here, some different prepositions. So porch with rocking chairs, with swing on double wide with beams. So you can find a lot of different keywords here. My favorite is at the very bottom. So right down here, the alphabeticals. So you can kind of go through this and see some of the different keywords people are searching. So as you're trying to go over a topic, it's a great way to really understand what people are looking up the most. And then last but not least, some of the most related keywords here. So just looking at this, it's pretty obvious the different types of subtopics I would need to create pages of content about. For example, lights, swings, decorations, railing, Christmas decorations. And then really if I'm trying to target the specific keyword of farmhouse porch, it's just going over some different design ideas. So this is kind of how I go through the idea of, okay, I'm coming up with this keyword I wanna target and how am I going to rank in Google by solving this topic completely. So that's ultimately what your goal is and it's not easy, especially the larger your website is. That's why it's very hard to rank for these popular keywords. But if I wanna rank for farmhouse porch, I need to make sure I have all these different things on my website so that when people are searching for it, Google and other search engines look at my website as a place that has a great resources for people who are looking up those keywords. So this is kind of most of these keyword tools here so the last but not least is google search console and i'll go through these five tools very very quickly but google search console once you have some of this data you can see how many clicks impressions you've driven your average position in search results and your average click-through rate so i'm hoping to really improve these numbers this year for farmhousegoals.com but if we scroll down here you can see the actual search terms that are driving the most impressions for my website so not always farmhouse keywords specifically, but you can see a bunch of different keywords here that are driving impressions. And there are thousands of keywords for my website that are driving impressions. And then if we come to the top here, I can see which keywords are driving clicks. So some people just looking up the brand and then other people as we come down here, all these different keywords, you can tell a lot of them have farmhouse somewhere in the keyword because that's what I'm targeting. 
And then as we come up here a little bit, the other thing you can do is click on specific pages. So this is really where I like to get to is I'm trying to rank better for some of these betting keywords. So I click on this individual page and I can actually look up the search terms that are driving clicks and impressions for this page. So it might help me say, okay, let me break out some of these into their own topics so that I can rank higher for them. But for right now, this page is ranking pretty well. It helps drive clicks to it and ultimately helps drive sales. So that's where all these keywords come into play is you need to target a lot of them. Unless you're ranking really high for these popular keywords, which is difficult, you need to make sure you're targeting a lot of these long tail keywords that people are looking up, whether it's farmhouse Christmas porch decorations. So I create a page like that, then next Christmas, maybe I can drive some sales. That's kind of how your outlook has to be when it comes to keyword research and going from keywords to conversions. So last but not least, these other keyword tools. So keywordtool.io, you can look up some information for different search engines here, but I just entered farmhouse decor and you can see they give me some of the top keywords here related to farmhouse decor, and then it starts getting into alphabetical. Now with this, you can come up with a lot of different ideas that people are looking up. And sometimes I like to use this, for example, if I do the farmhouse porch idea, if I enter that keyword in here, you can find a lot of different keywords that people are looking up and it just gives you some different ways to target that keyword. Now they do have a pro version and that will give you some more data as well. Word tracker, they give you 50 keywords every time you enter a search and you get 12 searches per day. So you can see I enter the same keyword here and you can see they give you search volume competition. I don't focus as much on competition because the main way that I like to look at competition is if we're looking at our average monthly searches, you usually have more competition the higher up you are here. So for something like farmhouse furniture, if you go to the first page of Google for farmhouse furniture, it is major, major companies like Amazon, like Wayfair. So it's really hard to actually compete with them for that type of keyword. So as you come down here and you start targeting some of these long tail keywords, farmhouse dining room wall decor, if I put together a great page just about dining room wall decorations, which I have, it does help drive more people than some of these short tail keywords. So competition isn't something I focus on too much because it's really hard to measure. But if we come back over here, so this is wordtracker.com, they'll give you some different information as well. SEO ability, so they'll give you three different keyword searches per day. And I just entered farmhouse decor and you can see all these different keywords they've given me. Next is Keyword Tool Dominator, same exact thing. So you're gonna see a lot of the same keywords here, but all of these different search tools that I'm giving you will give you a lot of different unique ideas and you might find something here that will help you, you know, farmhouse decor gift ideas. So that's something I don't have on my website. So that might be something where I say, you know, let me do 100 farmhouse decor gift ideas and we'll see how that page does. Last but not least, Uber suggests they give you three free daily searches as well. All of these different tools have pro options, but their free versions do give you a good amount of information. So again, if I enter farmhouse decor, I could see search volume. They give you some difficulty scores. So kind of helps when you are looking at competition, but keyword ideas here, if I do view all keyword ideas, they'll give me a lot of different options here. And I do like Uber suggests they used to be basically my favorite free keyword research tool, but I know they ended up making a pro version, which actually works pretty well too, but really just wanted to focus on the free versions here. So finishing off the video, find relevant keywords, build a list of keywords, come up with the topics you want to rank for, and then come up with that list of subtopics. And really what you're trying to do is understand search intent and create content that solves search intent. And as you consistently do that, you are going to rank higher and you are going to create pages that will do much better if you are running Google ads campaigns. For the second part of this video, I'm going to go and be going over how to complete your SEO keyword research list. So kind of taking the first tutorial for 2022, my keyword research tutorial, and how to take it to the next step to where your SEO keyword research list is complete and you are ready to start creating content for your business. So let's get into it. So for me, what I generally do is use the Google Keyword Planner and a couple of other free tools to come up with topics. So ultimately what I'm trying to do is find some of these short tail keywords, some of these main topics that people are searching, and I wanna create pages that rank for those topics. So coming over to the keyword planner real quick, what I did in that video is I went through my shop page and I went through all the different products that I offer on my website, farmhousegoals.com, and then I took some of these different keywords like farmhouse bedding, we could use farmhouse curtains, 
and I went to discover new keyword and entered those keywords here. So I did farmhouse bedding, things like farmhouse furniture, farmhouse rugs, farmhouse decor, and we'll just do farmhouse curtains here as well. And when you're searching for different keywords for your business, what you do is you wanna pull out those short tail keywords. So these ones I entered are all short tail keywords. So the next part, after we come up with a list of the different topics that we wanna target, which is what I did here, is we wanna come over here to the left-hand side and pull out everything that we think is unique and something we should have its own specific page for. And then what we can do is create essentially subcategory pages under all of these main category pages. Now this is gonna vary depending on what it is you're writing about. And for my case, for farmhouse goals, it's very product-based. So if we come over to my website and we click just here on product categories, what I'm gonna be doing is trying to find a bunch of different subcategories. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it for a specific topic like bedding, but that's essentially what I try to do is find a bunch of different subcategories because if we come to Google and we just search farmhouse bedding here, you can see the companies that I'm competing against, Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon, a lot of advertisements here, some images, Kohl's, we have Target, we have Wayfair, Overstock. So I'm not on the first page here, but if you look at some of these different brands here that are on the first page, they're incredibly popular. So it's difficult to rank above them. So that's where long tail keywords come in. So essentially what I do is I create my keyword list and you can see coming down here, all of these represent different topics and I already have a lot of them on my keyword list already, but Farmhouse Christmas Decor, that's its own topic that I can expand on with a ton of subcategories like ornaments and tree skirts and Christmas trees and all sorts of different Christmas products that I can actually target for those specific keywords. So that's essentially what we're trying to do here is come up with a list of topics that we wanna rank for. And then if we take farmhouse bedding, for example, so we scroll down here, looking at some of these examples, what I like to do is take my topics and then link them. So I link them to specific cells in my Microsoft Excel file. So let's just say we click on farmhouse pillows it's gonna bring us down to farmhouse pillows and show all of the different ways people are searching for farmhouse pillows. So if I only have one category on my website for farmhouse pillows, then I actually have opportunities for doing different sizes here, for doing pillow shams, which are a little bit different, lumbar pillows, Christmas pillows, farmhouse crochet pillow patterns. So there's a bunch of different things here that I can try to target with my own website so that I'm, if I'm not ranking for this specific keyword, I could at least rank pretty high for some of these long tail keywords that don't have as much competition. So if we scroll down here and we do farmhouse bedding. So we're gonna take farmhouse bedding. So what I like to actually do is come over here to the farmhouse bedding, this cell here, and just click on it, go to insert at the top and click on link. And we're gonna click on insert link here. And then what we're gonna do is enter the cell where that is. So in this case, it's D104, we'll click on okay. And now when I click on farmhouse bedding, it'll bring me right down to where farmhouse bedding is. So it'll bring me to all my different keywords so I can easily find them. So what we're gonna do next is figure out ways to come up with long keywords here. And this is essentially how we finalize our keyword list. We're coming up with a list of topics and then every time we click on that topic, so when it's time for me to create more content about farmhouse coffee tables, or basically create new subcategories of farmhouse coffee tables, I can click here, it'll bring me right down to coffee tables and I can see the different things that people are looking up. And if I have pages on my website for all of these different types of products, farmhouse coffee tables with wheels, then when someone goes to Google and searches for that keyword, I'm gonna be much more likely to rank and it's also so targeted that I have a list of coffee tables with wheels for sale that people can see that they're gonna be more likely to purchase than somebody who is just searching for rustic coffee tables because that's a huge broad category where people are not really sure what they want yet. Somebody looking for something this specific knows exactly what they want. So for farmhouse bedding, the way that I expand my keyword list after I come up with this list of topics is first you can use the Google Keyword Planner. So just enter farmhouse bedding there. So that's one thing you can do, we'll click on get results. Now the other tool, and I've talked about this tool a lot recently because it's, it's become such a great tool, is Keywords Everywhere. You can install it for Google Chrome. It's completely free. They do have a paid option, but the free option gives you a ton of information. So if I go to Google and I just search farmhouse bedding, every time I search, since I have Keywords Everywhere enabled for Google Chrome, you can see it comes with the, up with a list of long tail keywords. So I can take these keywords here and I'll generally copy these keywords. I'll just open up Notepad and I'll paste them. 
And then what I do is go through each individual keyword and try to think about if I think I can create a specific page of products for that keyword. For example, Amazon Canada, I'm not gonna be doing. On a budget is something I could potentially do. I'm not gonna be doing Target, Maine USA, or Pottery Barn. So Farmhouse Bedding Quilt, I would generally just look at Farmhouse Quilt as its own keyword, so I'd get rid of this, and I would make sure I have Farmhouse Quilts over here as its own topic. So that's basically the way that I look at different topics and subtopics is what people are looking for. So if we come back over and we'll finish our keyword list here, so I'm just gonna go through this pretty quickly. Okay, so all these right here, I consider to be completely unique. Now something like farmhouse style bedding, I'm not gonna target that specifically. I consider the page with farmhouse bedding to target that keyword. So that's not something I'm gonna be targeting. And if you're wondering, how do I know whether or not I should be targeting some of these long tail keywords specifically? I have a really good example here. So one of the things that came up was gray farmhouse bedding. So with keywords everywhere, I went to Pinterest. And if you go to Pinterest and you do a search here, you're gonna see a link right underneath when you have keywords everywhere enabled that says find topic ideas for farmhouse bedding. So if we click on that, it's gonna pull up a bunch of keywords related to farmhouse bedding using Pinterest. So if we scroll down here, what you're gonna see is farmhouse bedding sets romantic. That's not a keyword I've ever targeted before. And then we have gray far farmhouse bedding. So what you can do is simply do a Google search. So I did gray farmhouse bedding. And you can see first off, the images are definitely highly geared towards gray farmhouse bedding. And if we keep coming down here, you wanna look at what's ranking. So you can see there are specific pages for this search term that are ranking high. Now Amazon has just farmhouse bedding sets, but they're also Amazon, so they rank very high for a ton of different keywords. Kohl's, you can see the word gray in here. So not every single one, but if you do see a few, gray, rustic, and farmhouse bedding, if you do see a few of these, it shows some type of opportunity for you because if you can create pages for those specific keywords, that's ultimately the goal of keyword research is to find these long tail keywords. It's showing 320 average searches a month. So if I can create a page for this, and if we just scroll down, so at home, it's showing items one of 30 out of 46. So they have a total of 46 bedding sets that are considered gray and have a farmhouse theme. So if I can do the same thing on my website and try to get more than 46, then that's something that I can potentially use to rank higher than them. Now the other keyword was romantic farmhouse bedding. So this is a keyword I never even thought to target, but if we scroll down, you can see Wayfair, romantic farmhouse bedding. So a bunch of these have the word romantic in the title. So if you're seeing specific keywords that people are typing in into Google and you do a search for them yourself and you're seeing there are pages for them, then it's probably worth doing it on your own website, even though it's only showing 50 average monthly searches for this keyword, it might be something worthwhile to drive a few extra clicks every month to my website. So coming back over to Microsoft Excel and coming over here, so we went through a bunch of these different keywords here, and let's just say we're gonna use all of these here, we're gonna copy them. Now one thing you're gonna see is country farmhouse bedding, farmhouse country bedding. We never really need to worry about the order of the keywords, but we don't need them twice. So we have farmhouse king size bedding, farmhouse bedding king. I would consider both those both the same keyword. So instead of ticking bedding and ticking stripe, we'll just do stripe, get rid of this one. Okay, so we'll copy this right now. We might have some doubles in here still, but we'll paste these here. So this is essentially what I do, is I'll paste these keywords from keywords everywhere. And then the other thing we can do is use a tool like suvel.com. Just enter your main keyword here, farmhouse bedding, and it's gonna pull up some of the top search terms from Google, from Amazon, from Yahoo, and Bing, YouTube. We have answers over here. So you can download this just clicking right here. Sometimes I'll just copy a bunch of keywords and go through them. So just copy like this, go right over to Notepad, paste it, and we're gonna get all the keywords listed here as well. So go through them one by one, and you'll find some different things. For example, Boho Farmhouse Bedding. I don't know if that was my original list. So since we did gray and romantic as our examples before, we'll add those to our list. So we have gray here. We'll come back over to Microsoft Excel and we'll do romantic. Okay, so we have a bunch of different keywords. And then what I can start doing is creating product categories for these different keywords and adding products to those product categories. So this is how I essentially go through and finalize my keyword list. And I do this for every single topic. So next would be bar stools, after that would be end tables, and then chairs. 
And as you do this, you're gonna come up with a ton of different topic type keywords. For example, farmhouse wall decor. Within this is farmhouse signs. I probably consider that its own topic, but I'm just gonna keep it in wall decor here for now. Same with farmhouse tables. So you come in here, you have end tables, dining tables, coffee tables. So these are all essentially subcategories of farmhouse tables, but they have their own subcategories as well. So it's a great way to kind of keep all your keywords organized. And then as I'm saying, okay, I wanna rank for the keyword modern farmhouse. So when someone goes to Google and types in modern farmhouse, I wanna rank for that keyword. And the best way to do that is to make sure I'm covering all of these different topics, many times with unique pages, but essentially I want them all to link back to my main page for modern farmhouse. So I can rank for as many of these keywords as possible, take advantage of that traffic and ultimately drive more sales. Now the last thing I wanna go over is once you start creating more and more content, the next thing you need to do is use the Google Search Console. So we're looking at some data here in the Google Search Console for farmhouse goals specifically. What I did is people who are searching, I just did specific dates here and did for the search terms, farmhouse betting. So people who have queries containing farmhouse betting here, we click on apply. If we scroll down, it gave me, let's see how many at the bottom here. So 77 total keywords. So this is just another great way to find a bunch of different long tail keywords. So blue farmhouse bedding, black and white farmhouse bedding. I can basically go through and make sure I'm covering all of these different colors that people type in, all of the different styles that people type in, all the different sizes from king to twin, basically all the way down to crib. So making sure I'm covering all these keywords and I have specific pages on my website where it makes sense. So shabby chic farmhouse bedding, I don't have a page on my website about that. So you're gonna see 203 impressions. So that's something where if I create a page and then I have a title that actually matches that and I have a list of products for sale that would be considered shabby chic farmhouse bedding sets, I'd be more likely to take these impressions and turn them into clicks. That's ultimately our goal here. It does. It is a difficult process and you do need to understand how to go from topics to content so if you're writing about different types of topics, if we just come back over here to the Keyword Planner one more time, and let's just say we're writing about WordPress. So we're just gonna search WordPress here. We're gonna click on Get Results. Okay, so if we scroll down, it's giving us the most relevant keywords here. So basically what you would do is take a bunch of these keywords and make sure you're writing content about that them or make sure you have a list of WordPress themes on your website, a list of WordPress plugins on your website. You could also take a keyword like WordPress plugins and you might have something like the 20 best WordPress plugins you need for 2022, the 10 best WordPress hosting platforms, how to create a WordPress website, WordPress templates for your store, WordPress templates for a business website. So you can take all of these different keywords here and essentially what you're trying to do is come up with topics that you can write about. Even if we come up here and we add a filter and we just say, we just wanna focus on WordPress keywords, we take that, enter it as a text match, it's gonna pull up everything that people are looking for with WordPress, so pricing, free WordPress hosting. All of these represent potential content ideas for your business. So as we scroll down here, what's the best WordPress page builder or five best WordPress page builders, WordPress plans, so maybe you go over some different hosting plans, how to create a landing page in WordPress. So all of these represent different keywords, different problems that people are typing in, there's 450 here just using one search of WordPress and entering one filter. So you can find a ton of different keywords here. And what you can eventually do is start with a website, enter a competitor's website here. So I know wpbeginner.com, very popular website. So if we just take this, we still have our WordPress filter here. So it's giving us over 1700 keywords, almost 1800 keywords. And you can see here, if we just look by average monthly searches, for example, WordPress tutorial, help with WordPress, e-commerce for WordPress, how to clear cash in WordPress, WordPress membership plugins. These are a ton of different keywords that you can target. If you have a WordPress blog, the hardest part is creating content, not finding keywords, but you can use these tools completely free, keywords everywhere, the Google Keyword Planner, you just need a Google Ads account, and then suval.com. All of these will give you plenty of keywords to target. The really hard part is creating pages for all these different keywords. So hopefully this helps in finalizing your SEO keyword list. 
understanding how to organize your ideas and some of the topics you want to cover. And the more that you create, the more you're going to rank over time. So continue to create that content and you're going to keep ranking high. Next, as you already might know, there are hundreds, if not thousands of keyword research tools out there. Most of them are paid keyword research tools. So what I try to do is find my 10 favorite free keyword research tools that will all give you some unique information, whether it's a keyword research tool for an app store, whether it's just trying to find keywords for YouTube or different ways to expand on your keyword list and find more long tail keywords. So let's get into my 10 best free keyword research tools for 2022. So I'm gonna go through each keyword research tool individually. I wanted to list them at the beginning because I assume people wanna know which the 10 best tools are that I believe. Now, if you go to the description of this video, you can find links for every single keyword tool. So if you're having trouble finding a keyword tool, just go to the description of this video and you'll be able to find everything you need about these tools. I'm gonna go through them one by one pretty quickly, just go over some different examples that you can use them for. But hopefully this is helpful as you are building your keyword list, whether it's for search engine optimization, whether you're trying to just find new content ideas, all of these will help you as you use these keyword research tools. So let's get into this and let's get started with the Google Keyword Planner. So we'll get started here first with the Google Keyword Planner, which is available through Google Ads. It's a free keyword research tool when you do have a Google Ads account. So you're gonna need a Google Ads account to get started. And you also unlock all of the data from the Keyword Planner when you're running an active Google Ads campaign. So in order to find the Keyword Planner, you can either go to the link directly, so it's ads.google.com slash aw slash keyword planner, or when you sign into your Google Ads account, you go to tools and settings, come to planning, and click on the Keyword Planner from the top menu. Now once you're here, what you wanna do is click on discover new keywords, and you can either start with keywords here to find a bunch of long tail keywords related to whatever you enter. You can enter up to 10 keywords at a time, or you can start with a website. So both features are really great when you are looking for more keywords. So let's just say, for example, I'm going to be using WordPress throughout this video. Let's just say I want to find keywords related to WordPress. So just an easy example. So what you do is enter a keyword. You can enter up to 10 and we're going to click on get results. Now, this is what it's going to look like after you perform a search. You can broaden your search at the top. They have some recommended keywords up at the top here. You can refine your keywords over on the right hand side. This also gives you a lot more information for if you are looking for some different ideas. I'm going to click the X on refine keywords for right now. But if we scroll down here, it's going to sort keywords by relevance and we can see all these different keywords here related to WordPress. So it's a great way to understand what people are researching when it does come to WordPress. You can use filters so you can make sure the keyword text contains WordPress or a specific word that you want. You can sort by average monthly searches to make sure that there's either a certain amount of average monthly searches. So what we can do is if we just click on average monthly searches here, we can get an idea of overall search volume. So as we scroll down, we can see some of the top keywords related to WordPress. Now, the other thing we can do is you can build your keyword plan and actually build a Google Ads campaign through the Keyword Planner. I have a couple videos on my channel about the Keyword Planner that I just recently did. So if you want to find those, look in the video description and I'll link directly to those videos because there are 20, 30 minute videos on their own. So the other thing we can do is if we come up to the top, rather than starting with keywords, we can start with a website and we could either use a specific page or use an entire website. So one of the biggest websites related to WordPress is wpbeginner.com. So we can use the entire website, click on get results, and what it will show us is the most popular keywords and the most relevant keywords for their website. So you can see here by average monthly searches, if we just go to keyword by relevance, you can see some of these different keywords that they have here. And this is where filters would come in. So you'd wanna say, let's make sure average monthly searches is at least 100, we'll click on apply. And now that will get rid of some of those just 10 searches per month. So you can see there's a ton of keywords here, just simply entering one keyword of WordPress and one website. So if you're looking for ideas, enter your top keywords here based on products or services that you're offering and enter a competitor's website here, enter a couple competitor websites to find new keywords. So number one is the Google Keyword Planner. I would say this is the keyword tool I use the most. You'll see it a lot in my videos because I do think it's a, a very good keyword tool to start with. Now the next two tools I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna go over back to back because they're both extensions that you can install for Chrome. For Keywords Everywhere, you can install for Firefox as well. I'm using Google Chrome, so that's the example I'm gonna use. 
So first is Keywords Everywhere. The next one is Keyword Surfer. So this is available through surferseo.com slash keyword surfer extension. You can add it to Chrome completely free. Now there's these tools each do different things, but when you do go to Google and let's just say I search WordPress in Google, at the very top here, you're gonna see Powered by Surfer. It's showing me average monthly searches for WordPress and then the average cost per click for Google Ads campaigns for WordPress. So over on the right-hand side is where you're gonna see a ton of information. Now, both of these tools have paid options, so I'm not going to be going over any of the paid options here, but their free versions are great in and of themselves. So if we scroll down, you can see overall trend data for WordPress over time, so it's dropping, but still a very popular keyword. And then as we keep coming down, so this is Keyword Surfer right here on the right-hand side. I wanna first show you Keywords Everywhere. So you'll see the different logos here. This is the Keywords Everywhere logo. First, it's gonna show trending keywords. There's only one here. It's gonna show related keywords. So this gives us a total of eight different keywords. And then my favorite thing is the long tail keywords at the bottom. So if we're searching for WordPress, you can see all of these are different long tail keywords. And what we can do at the very top of Google is click on find long tail keywords for WordPress. And it's gonna show us a ton of different keywords that people are typing in related to WordPress. Now next, and this is what I love about Keywords Everywhere, is you can go to something like YouTube, and when you're on YouTube, we can do a search for WordPress, and up at the very top here, there's Find YouTube Keywords for WordPress, and then we also have some search insights here as well. So if we do Find YouTube Keywords for WordPress, we're gonna see the same exact thing, and it's gonna pull up the most popular WordPress keywords. So it helps you find a ton of different keywords. Now, the paid option will give you search volume, and you will get more information from the paid option of Keywords Everywhere, but the other two things you can do, and we're gonna switch up our example a little bit here just because WordPress doesn't work as well, is let's say you go to amazon.com and we're searching for camping. You can click find Amazon keywords for camping and it's gonna open up the same exact page that we keep opening specific to Amazon. So you can find some of the top keywords related to camping and then you can even do the same thing on Pinterest. So on Pinterest, I did the same thing for camping. You click on find topic ideas, you're gonna see the same exact page. So keywords everywhere, keyword research on the go. Basically what I like to do is if I'm working on an article or if I'm working on something specific, I love to search in Google, click on find long tail keywords here or just scroll down and look at the list of long tail keywords and see if there's anything I can come up with. I also do this when I'm looking up YouTube tags. I just try to find some different long tail keywords for whatever topic I'm covering. Now keyword surfer, so coming back over, going over the third tool here, keyword surfer. What I do like about this one is if we scroll up a little bit, so they give you different keyword ideas. There's 93 keyword ideas here. They do give us some search volume and they show similarity for this keyword to the keyword that we entered up at the top. So if we keep going over here, you can find a ton of different ideas, give us 93 total ideas. So you just wanna pull out the ones that are gonna be the most relevant for content that you can create. The other thing that I like is if you click on generate article outline, they're basically basically gonna look at all the different pages that are ranked high in Google, and they're gonna give you some different ideas that you can use in your own article. So you don't wanna use their exact outline, but some different things, six reasons to use WordPress in 2022, how to get a WordPress site for free. Now it's not gonna be perfect, so you might wanna say how to create a free WordPress website, aspects of WordPress that aren't free. So if we keep coming down here, there's a ton of different ideas that you can look through if you're generating an article. Different keywords will work very well for this. So I just wanted to go over that for Keyword Surfer. You can generate articles. And then the other thing I like is it does show you average monthly search volume and some estimated bids for Google Ads. Okay, so the next tool is gonna to be Suvel, so suvel.com. And with this one, when you enter a word here or multiple words, it's gonna look at the long tail keywords, basically the autocomplete search suggestions for Google. So you can see the logos in the background here. We have Google, we have Amazon, we have Yahoo, we have Bing, there's YouTube over here, answers, and then they also have a Wikipedia section. But I use Suvel a lot when I am writing content because if you're looking for some different ideas, for example, if I'm writing about WordPress hosting, what you can do is look at some of these different keyword ideas here. So WordPress hosting cost, free WordPress hosting, providers, so AWS, if we keep scrolling down, so Bluehost. So just some different ideas that you can use. So with CDN, a content delivery network. 
So it gives you a bunch of different ideas for long tail keywords. And I think Suval is the best as you are creating content to find more ideas. Now, next is going to be the Google Search Console. So what you want to do when you do create a website is add your website to the Google Search Console. You can use Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics to actually authenticate your website. So what's going to happen is you can look at your website and you can see how many clicks, how many impressions, your average click through rate and your average position for any period of time through Google. So it gives you a ton of information about how your website is actually performing in Google. And then as we scroll down, you can see the top search queries that are driving clicks and impressions to your website. We could look at our top pages here and see what pages are driving clicks and impressions. And if we scroll down here, this is giving us a thousand keywords. So if we look at 500 keywords, you can see there are a ton of different ideas. And this is really helpful as you're looking for what keywords are driving traffic to your website. And then the other thing that you can do is if you click on specific pages, so let's just say I click on this farmhouse betting page and we go back over to queries and we scroll down, it's gonna show which search terms are driving the most traffic, so clicks and the most impressions. So it gives you some different ideas where you can say, okay, let me pull out a keyword like farmhouse comforter, farmhouse comforter set king and create their own pages so that I can drive traffic specifically for those keywords and really optimize better for those keywords. So you can see here, this is showing me 899 different keywords for a single page that have gotten clicks and impressions or at least impressions. So Google search console, I am going to update my tutorial for Google search console this year, but it's a great free tool offered by Google to see how you're performing in the search results. So the next tool here is Google Trends. I'm gonna create an updated tutorial for Google Trends this year as well. If we scroll down, they have some examples at the top. They have the year in search 2021, so you could see Google Trends data for last year. If we scroll down, they have recently trending as well, so this is a great place to be. If you're looking for ideas, if you are covering news, they're gonna give you a ton of trending searches and you can find even more here. Now, what I do like here is if we do enter a search term like WordPress, we click on enter. So we have WordPress as search term. It's gonna show us interest over time. So this is from last year to this year. If we scroll down, you can see interest by region. So this might be useful depending on the keywords you're targeting. They have related topics. Now, what you could see here is related toppings. They show rising and top. I don't generally use rising because sometimes it's showing basically for Google Trends, so it's showing you which topics are actually showing more relevancy towards whichever keyword you entered. But let's just say I click on top, you could see WordPress, website, plugin, theme, web hosting, so some different topics that are related to the keyword. Same thing with related search queries, so some of these aren't really overly uh, relevant to our keyword, for example, Reddit soccer streams. So if we scroll down and we click on top again, you can see it's gonna give us 25 different search terms that are highly relevant to the one that we entered. And then the other thing we can do is if we scroll to the top here, so we have WordPress, let's say I wanna compare this with Shopify and we can add another comparison, we'll just say Wix. So we're looking at three different search terms and you can actually see the interest over time in the different search terms and it's gonna give you some more information. So it's showing compared breakdown by subregion, WordPress, Shopify, Wix, interest for each of them. As we scroll down, the other thing that I like is that it breaks it out each individual keyword that you entered. So it gives you the interest by subregion for that keyword and then related search terms. You could look at rising and top as well. So Google Trends, a great free tool to give you a ton of information about any keyword that you enter. And you can also use it to find breaking news and whatever stories or keywords are actually trending currently. So the next keyword tool is keywordtool.io and there is a keyword tool pro here. So this is a free and premium tool. But what I like is they have different search engines here. So we have Google, YouTube, Bing, Amazon, eBay, Play Store, Instagram, and Twitter. So if we're looking up WordPress here, you can see there's a ton of different keywords. One of the things I do like is they show us alphabetical keywords, which Keywords Everywhere does as well. But as we come here, you can see some of these at the very top are the most popular keywords. And then right when we get here to WordPress admin, it's starting to show us different keywords, basically in alphabetical order. So if you're looking at each letter of the alphabet, you can see WordPress admin, alternatives, those are very popular keywords. As you get into B, so backup, blog themes, block editor. 
So you can see some different keywords alphabetical, and as you get into each individual letter from A, B to C, it'll show you the most popular keywords at the top. So just a great tool that you can use for Google, YouTube, Bing. For example, I can come to the Play Store here and let's just say, so it's showing WordPress mobile app, WordPress blog app, course, dashboard. What you can do here is enter something like puzzle and it's gonna give you 139 unique keywords related to the Play Store. So as we come down, you can see exactly what people are typing in specifically for the Play Store. So it's a great way to look up different keywords for different search engines because a lot of times we just optimize for Google, but you can optimize for YouTube as well, for Amazon, depending on what it is you're selling. Now, looking at the Play Store is gonna bring us into our next keyword tool, which is App Tweak, the Keyword Suggest tool. So they automatically enter Play here. You can search the App Store or the Google Play Store. You can change your country here. You can change your language. Click on Suggest, and they're gonna give us a ton of keywords, again, in alphabetical order. So you can see exactly what people are typing in. To continue on to our other example before we'll enter Puzzle here, click on Suggest and it loaded so we can see some of the top keywords here related to puzzle. So you can see right here, these are very popular puzzle keywords. And then as you're looking for some different ideas, if you're creating a puzzle app, you might be able to say, okay, let me make sure I'm creating a puzzle based on some keyword that you're seeing here. So apptweak.com gives you free keyword suggestions for the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. So let's come over, the next one is answer the public. So this is a very popular tool they do have a premium version and they only offer two or three total searches per day. So if we come in here and we just enter WordPress again, so we're gonna do WordPress and click on search. So we'll scroll down, it gave us 391 results for WordPress and what I like about Answer the Public is they give questions, they have prepositions, comparisons and alphabeticals. So they have a lot of visual data here so you can look up specific words that people ask basically about WordPress and you can use these to answer questions. Now I prefer just using data. I think it's just easier to read, but you can see our WordPress plugins free, our WordPress website's good. Can WordPress host my domain? Can WordPress handle heavy traffic? So these are different questions that you can answer within your content. And then as we scroll down here, you can see prepositions. I like to use data again. So WordPress for beginners, for windows, for business. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of different keywords that you can target. So next is gonna be comparisons. So we'll click on data again. So WordPress and Shopify, WordPress or Wix, WordPress or Squarespace, WordPress or Shopify. These are all good topics that you could easily target with content. And then at the very bottom, you get alphabetical keywords. So just using Answer the Public, we have 391 different results, and it's a great way to expand on the content that you're already creating. Okay, last but not least is Keywordit. So Keywordit is a unique keyword research tool. It's the Reddit keyword research tool. And what you do is you enter the name of a subreddit below. So right here, you're gonna enter the name of a subreddit. So if we use WordPress, okay, so you can see we have a WordPress subreddit and we click on get keywords. What this is actually gonna do is extract keywords from the specific subreddit that we entered. So we did WordPress, we scroll down, you can see a bunch of different keywords here. And what I like about Keywordit is they have a bunch of unique keywords that don't always include the main search term that you entered or the main subreddit that you entered. So for example, you can see advanced custom fields, clear DNS cache, Google Analytics code. So these can all be different keywords that you can relate to WordPress. And a lot of times in Reddit, people are asking questions about these things. So you can say how to avoid brute force attacks with WordPress. If we're looking up here, what is the best WordPress e-commerce plugin? So all you need to do is come up to the top here, enter any subreddit. So there's marketing subreddits. There are basically subreddits about any topic. So you just wanna enter that here, get keywords, and it's gonna pull out keywords that people are actually searching. And then the other thing you could do is click on context. So if you click on context, you could see they have which free WordPress themes you use, what's a good free theme for WordPress, so they're basically pulling up the conversations that people had that use this keyword. So there's a ton of different information that you can use. And then you also get monthly search volume on the very top of it. So a ton of different ideas here using these different free keyword research tools. Now coming back over here one more time just to recap the video. So Google Keyword Planner is, is my favorite free keyword research tool. You can enter a single keyword, you can enter multiple keywords, you can enter competitor websites, you can enter specific pages and find every relevant keyword you need to. 
Keywords Everywhere, a great extension to install on Chrome, and you can find keywords for a ton of different search engines. Keyword Surfer gives you additional data about average monthly search volume, what people are actually bidding in Google ads. Suvel, I like to use suvel.com if I'm writing an article and I'm looking for basically what people are typing in and related to whatever I'm writing about. Google Search Console, you can see how your website is performing in the Google search results. Google Trends, what is trending, some related keywords there as well. KeywordTool.io gives you a ton of information from different search engines. AppTweak, Keyword Suggest Tool, perfect for finding keywords for specific app stores. And then Answer the Public, you can see we entered just WordPress. It gave us 391 different questions, prepositions, and alphabetical keywords. Last but not least, Keyword is going to extract keywords from a specific subreddit. So different keyword research tools for different tasks. If you're running Google Ads campaigns, you know how important keyword research can be, especially as you're targeting the search network and making sure that you're targeting all the top keywords for your business. So what I go through in the next portion of this video is how to come up with a keyword research list specific for Google Ads. Now keep in mind, you can use our other keyword research tutorials because those should be guiding your content decisions and the types of pages you're creating. But our Google Ads keyword research tutorial will give you a little bit more insight into creating a PPC advertising keyword list. So to get started, you're obviously going to need a Google Ads account. So it's completely free to create an account. You're only going to be charged when you actually start running advertisements. So you want to start by creating a Google Ads account because that will give you access to the Google Keyword Planner. So the Google Keyword Planner is the best tool because it is built for Google Ads customers to find keywords for their campaigns. So one thing I want to show you just before I get into the entire video is I did recently do a keyword research tutorial for 2022. It's about 30 minutes long and it's going to show you how to create a huge list of keywords for your business. So if you need a little bit more help with kind of coming up with more relevant keywords based on your products and services, then this is the place I would start. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start really quick in the keyword planner just to show you a few things that you can do. So when you are looking up new keywords, the main thing you really need to know is what are you going to be advertising? What is it that you want to actually sell to people when they do click on your advertisements? So for this example, I'm going to be using my website farmhousegoals.com and I'm specifically just going to be going over some different bedding keywords. So you can see here I have farmhouse bedding sets, farmhouse throw blankets, farmhouse duvet covers, farmhouse quilts. So if I'm promoting those things and I'm sending traffic to these different pages, for example, this would be the page I'm going to send traffic for farmhouse throw blankets. People come here and as they scroll down, there are a ton of different blankets for sale that have a farmhouse theme to them. So what you would want to do is start in the Google Keyword Planner and click on discover new keywords. And what we can do here is just start with keywords and I can do farmhouse bedding, farmhouse quilts. We'll do farmhouse throw blankets. So you basically want to enter the main keywords that you're trying to advertise here, some of the things that you're trying to sell. So that's what we're going to start with. You can enter up to 10 keywords as you get started. So we'll do a few more here. So we'll do farmhouse duvet covers, farmhouse sheets, and farmhouse crib bedding. So these are the seven different places we're going to be sending traffic. So I'm going to be doing the main keyword for each of those different pages. So all we need to do now is click on get results. And once we click on get results, now you can adjust some different things up at the top here, your location targeting, your language targeting. You can also adjust the months here to see search volume for different periods. It's always going to show the last 12 months. So with the main keywords we added, they're going to show them at the very top here. And then as we keep scrolling down, it's going to have a bunch of different keyword ideas based on relevance. Now what we can do is adjust this by average monthly searches. If we scroll over here, they'll actually show you the top of page bid, the low range and the high range. So basically how low advertisers are bidding and how high advertisers are bidding and then overall competition here as well. Now, if you are running advertisements, so you can see these are in my account. I'll show you that in a little bit. If you are running a campaign already, then this will show up in your account. The last thing I want to go over is average monthly searches here. It might only show you ranges of data. It might show zero to 100, 100 to 1000, 1000 to 10,000. I wouldn't get too caught up on average monthly searches. You're basically looking for any keywords that get any searches at all. And that's where you want to start. So let's just say, for example, I want to use these different keywords and I want to start with these different keywords to target for my campaign. What you can do is click over here on a keyword and you can click multiple keywords at a time. 
and you can click here to add this to a plan so you're creating a new keyword plan or an existing campaign so if I cl click on plan click on new ad group I can do something like farmhouse bedding okay we're gonna click on create that's gonna create the new ad group for farmhouse bedding you can choose your match type for keywords now if I generally target phrase match keywords I'm gonna go over match types in a little bit but I generally choose phrase match and we can click on add keyword so what that's going to do is it's going to start creating a keyword plan. So you can see over here, keyword plan. And what you can actually do is create a campaign directly through the Google Keyword Planner. So we're going to do one more example here. If I click on Farmhouse Quilts, one selected, we're adding it to our plan. We're going to create a new ad group for Farmhouse Quilts since we're going to be sending traffic to a different landing page for this ad group. Click on Create. So now we have two ad groups, a phrase match keyword, and we're going to click on Add Keyword here again. Let's click on X here. We're going to come back out to the keyword planner. Now, when you do have your Google ads account, you go to tools and settings, go to planning and keyword planner. Also, if you just Google, go to google.com and enter Google keyword planner, you can be brought right to this page for the keyword planner. Click on go to keyword planner and it's going to open up this page right here. Once you have a Google ads account. So let's come over to our five step process and get started. So my five step process for Google Ads keyword research is first you wanna understand Google Ads keyword matching. I'm gonna go through that right after I go through each of these different steps. Next, you wanna create a list of landing pages where you're gonna be sending traffic to. You wanna list the main keyword for each landing page. Then you wanna expand your keyword list for each page. And last but not least, create an additional keyword list as you are creating your campaign. I'm gonna show you why that's important. So first, Google Ads keyword matching. So obviously step one, understand Google Ads keyword matching. And here's the example directly from the Google Ads help page. So if someone goes to Google and searches lawn mowing service, if you use broad match keywords, so there's three match types, broad match, phrase match, and exact match. If you use broad match keywords, you just enter your keyword without any quotes, any brackets. You're just entering the keyword just like this. If you're using phrase match, you're gonna put quotes around your entire keyword. And if you're using exact match, you're gonna put brackets around your entire keyword. So if you are using broad match and someone goes to Google and searches lawn mowing service, your ad might show up for something like lawn aeration prices. So essentially Google is looking for any search that is even remotely related to your keyword. So if somebody goes in and searches for lawn aeration prices, that may match if somebody is using the broad match for lawn mowing services. Now next is phrase match. Phrase match is what I use the most often. So this is ads may show on searches that include the meaning of your keyword. So for somebody who is searching lawn mowing service, you can see these three right here, all very similar key keywords. Even if people use, you know, something like landscaping service to cut grass, that's a, the same exact thing as somebody going in and searching for lawn mowing service. So with phrase match, you're getting, and you're gonna see down here, moderate matching, you're getting really good keywords and really good search terms that are gonna match your keywords. So you don't have to worry too much in the terms of broad match. Someone looking for lawn aeration prices might have no interest in lawn mowing service. They might just be looking for, okay, how much is this gonna cost me? I might do this three months from now when it's the spring or something like that. So. For broad match, you're really leaving Google in charge of your advertisements and when they're gonna show because they're gonna show for a ton of unrelated search terms. Now, last but not least is exact match. This is gonna be the most tight of all of them. So lawn mowing service, grass cutting service. It's only gonna show for the keyword that you entered and searches that are very close to the same meaning as your keyword. So I, the way I kind of look at it, exact match is for really tight budgets phrase match for tight budgets and budgets that are a little bit larger and broad matches for companies that just have massive budgets and you just want to make sure you're spending a ton of money on Google ads and you don't want to miss anything that is even remotely related to the keywords that you're targeting. So for the most part, I would say phrase match works the best for most businesses because that's going to give you the best of exact match, the best of broad match, and you're going to make sure that your keywords are really targeted towards search terms. So. Step number two, you wanna create a list of landing pages for your Google Ads campaign. So if you're not familiar with a landing page, it's the page you send users after they click your ad. So somebody clicks on your advertisement, that's gonna be the page that they see. So coming back over here to my for my example for farmhouse goals, 
if I'm using these different pages for my landing pages, then what I would want to do is copy the link address for all of these different pages. And you want to set up a spreadsheet that looks something like this. So we paste our landing page URL here, our main keyword for each landing page. So I have farmhouse betting and that will actually bring us to step three in our process here. So list the main keyword for each landing page. So as we do this, what you want to do is come up with a list of landing pages where you plan on sending traffic to. So my next one would be farmhouse throw blankets. So we enter this as our landing page URL, our main keyword farmhouse throw blankets. Okay. So then you would want to keep doing this for all the landing pages where you want to send traffic to. And the way I kind of look at building a Google ads campaign is I like to group, create ad groups in my Google ads campaign for the different landing pages where I'm planning on sending traffic. If someone is looking for farmhouse throw blankets, I don't want to send them to a page with a bunch of farmhouse bedding sets. They're two completely different things, even if they do seem related. Okay. So I would keep doing this now for all of these different landing pages here. I could just do this with a couple of different examples. So we'll just use bedding sets and farmhouse throw blankets. Now the other one I want to show you is quilts. So we're going to copy that too, because I'm going to use an example for quilts a little later on in the video. So we'll do farmhouse quilts. Okay. So now we have three different landing pages where we're going to send traffic. These to me all represent ad groups. So the ad group would be farmhouse bedding, farmhouse throw blankets, farmhouse quilts. So there are different ad groups where I want to create specific advertisements. So I'm actually matching the advertisement with what people are typing in and looking for when they do go to Google. Okay. So next is going to be step four. So if we come over here to step number four, what you want to do next is expand your keyword list for each page using the Google keyword planner. Now there's a couple other tools I want to go over as well. And what I'm going to be doing is expanding my keyword list specifically for farmhouse quilts right now, just to show you some different examples. A couple other keyword tools that you can use keywords everywhere.com completely free. You can install it for Chrome or Firefox. And the other one is keyword surfer. It's surfer SEO.com keyword surfer extension. I'll put all these links in the video description so you can easily find them and you can add this to Chrome as well. So once you've done that, what you can do is do a search for farmhouse quilts or whatever your keyword is. And when you do that search, Keyword Surfer will actually show you the average estimated monthly search volume and it will show you the cost per click for Google Ads campaigns just so you get an idea of how much you need to bid for each click to your website. So we do farmhouse quilts here using keywords everywhere. If we scroll down, you can find a ton of long tail keywords that you can also target for your campaign as well. Now the other thing we can do is if we come back over to the keyword planner, all you need to do is enter that main keyword here. So farmhouse quilts and we can click on get results. And as we scroll down here, now you can keep building your keyword plan. So I can keep adding a bunch of these different keywords to my plan. But what I like to do is look up using the keywords I provided. So I did farmhouse quilts. Now this is where step five comes in. So you can see this one right here, Sawyer mill bedding. So I'll copy this keyword. So going to step five, create an additional keyword list you can use for future SEO and PPC efforts. As you do your Google ads keyword research, you're going to find your, uh, there's going to be a lot of keywords where maybe you don't have a good landing page for. So what I like to do is just say additional keywords over here and I'm going to paste this first one here, make sure it matches and we'll do a bottom border. So we have additional keywords, Sawyer mill bedding. So I don't want to tar target that specifically and send people to my farmhouse quilts page. But if I do have Sawyer mill bedding products on my website, then what I can potentially do is take advantage of 720 average monthly searches and send people to a page that just has Sawyer mill bedding for sale, which is a specific type of bedding. So I'm not going to send that traffic to my quilts page. What I would rather do is say, let's do something like farmhouse quilts King. We'll copy this keyword and we'll enter here for additional keyword. Now a couple others that I know. So basically I'll just come here and do something like ooh, I'm in the wrong. Okay. So basically I'll come here and say modern farmhouse quilts, farmhouse quilt sets. And I know there's vintage farmhouse quilts and you can find a lot of these keywords both using the Google keyword planner. So as I come down modern and vintage, those are two that I saw. So farmhouse quilts queen, that's another one that I can target. Now you can see here Sawyer mill patchwork quilt. So that's another one there. So you can find a bunch of these different keywords as you continue to build out your keyword list. And it helps you as you 
even make pages just for search engine optimization or creating pages of content if I can create a page that lists a ton of different Sawyer Mill bedding for sale, there's a good chance I can get it to rank because it's not going to have the same level of competition as something like farmhouse bedspreads or something like farmhouse quilts where there's a ton of different people with great pages on their website that list those types of products. So as we come down here, we have farmhouse quilts queen. So you can create this huge list of keywords and then as you're building your campaign, or even after you publish your campaign, if you just have this one keyword in here, you can go back to your campaign and easily add these additional keywords. So if I do come over here and I go into my existing campaign, so this is a campaign that I have through Google Ads right now, I'm basically just doing it, I'm gonna be using it for tutorials, but you can see here I have an ad group farmhouse quilts. If I click on it, what you're gonna see is I only have two keywords here, farmhouse quilts and farmhouse quilt sets, both phrase match keywords. So let's just say I want to add a new keyword here. So again, this is where the quotes come in. So if I just did something like farmhouse quilts, this would be a broad match keyword because there's nothing around the keyword. If I do quote farmhouse quilts, it's now a phrase match keyword. And if I do, oop, we'll do brackets farmhouse quilts, this is going to be an exact match keyword. So just so you know how to dis distinguish those different types of keywords. I generally enter all my keywords with quotes, so you can do what works best for you depending on your budget. So you can also use the built-in keyword list over here. So enter a related website, enter your product or service. So if I do farmhouse quilts, click on enter, you're going to see a lot of the same keywords that we saw through the Google Keyword Planner. So it's another built-in keyword tool that you can use. So I could say, let's do farmhouse quilts king. Now farmhouse bedspreads, that's something I can add over here to my additional keywords. So farmhouse bed spreads come back over so we could do modern vintage farmhouse quilts queen so again you don't have to go through the process of coming up with these additional keywords I think this is helpful if you're creating a campaign with a ton of different ad groups and you just want want to kind of go through and find some of the best keywords but you can just use this built-in keyword tool here as well farmhouse style quilts you don't need a ton of different keywords because if you just have a phrase match of farmhouse quilts it should match all these keywords as well but it is helpful to kind of see performance for some of these different keywords and make sure you're not missing out on some of these popular searches as well farmhouse patchwork quilt farmhouse quilt bedding farmhouse star quilt king quilt so this is good for now what I would do is just put quotes around all these keywords okay so now we have quotes around all these keywords so what we can do is save and that will add all of these keywords to this exist existing ad group. Now, the other thing that you're going to be able to see is within your ad group, you can find search terms and you can also add those to your ad group as well. So if I go into search terms, this is going to give you a good example of how phrase match works. So country quilts, that is a search term or keyword that I am not targeting at all. So within my keywords, I was just targeting farmhouse quilts and farmhouse quilt sets in a phrase match. So some of these different things, farmhouse quilts king, you can see I already have that. Country quilts, I can take this and I can add this as a keyword. If I don't wanna target something like country quilts, I can add it as a negative keyword. So just another part of your keyword research, if I wanna add country quilts as an exact match, that's something that I can do as well. As we scroll down here, you might see something like Martha Stewart farmhouse quilts. So what I could do is click on this, add Martha Stewart as a negative keyword, because I don't know if I actually carry those products on my website. And people who are searching for something specific in Google are usually looking for exactly that, and they're not gonna find something different and say, okay, let me purchase this instead. So if I do have a ton of Martha Stewart farmhouse quilts for sale, then I can target this keyword. If not, I would rather just enter it as a negative altogether. So hopefully all of that makes sense. Now, if we come back over here, and we come to our list of ad groups here. You can see I have this farmhouse quilts ad group. So just to give you an example of how I structure my campaigns, if we come into the farmhouse quilts, you can see the different keywords I have here. If we go to ads and extensions, you can see my ads completely match farmhouse quilts, farmhouse quilt sets, and there's a bunch of different headlines that can be put in there as well. And if we come back here again to all my list of ad groups, and let's just say we click on farmhouse comforters, for example, you can see some of the different keywords that I'm targeting here. For this one, I'm targeting rustic comforters as well. And you can see these keywords will still drive conversions because rustic and farmhouse are essentially synonyms. 
But what we can also do is just look at the ads and extensions real quick, just so you can see. So rustic comforter sets, farmhouse comforter sets. So my advertisements are gonna be closely matching the different search terms that people are typing in. And ultimately that's my goal when it comes to Google ads, create advertisements and use landing pages that are really gonna match what people are looking for. That's always been my goal with Google ads. Now to finish off the video, a couple of quick examples here. Let's just say for example, you're themeforest.net and you wanna start running some advertisements for the different themes you have on your website. If we come over to their menu, you can see they have a ton of different, even just under WordPress. They have e-commerce themes, they have mobile themes, real estate, retail, technology, wedding themes, corporate themes. So all of these different menu items have a ton of different drop downs. So if you're sending traffic to this website, and let's just say for example, I wanna target people who are looking for Shopify themes. So I'm targeting Shopify themes as my keyword. I don't wanna send people to this page right here. I wanna come into the e-commerce section over here and as we scroll down, you can see Shopify. So if we click on that, you're gonna see Shopify themes and templates. So that's gonna be the place where you wanna send traffic to. So if I go to Google and I search Shopify themes, you can see at the very top, there's an ad for Shopify, just matches exactly what I typed in. Not sure what the hyphens are. If we come down here, so themeforest.net, 2021's best Shopify themes. Now it is 2022, but this is still a really good advertisement overall. Professional and mobile commerce ready. Choose your theme and start selling today. And then they have 45,000 plus WordPress themes, templates from $2. Now these down here, free e-commerce templates. So not terrible, but I'd rather have an advertisement that says free Shopify themes. Web.com, thousands of designs and free images, easily online store website. Again, this, I would rather have something like best Shopify themes because people are looking for exactly what they type in or something that will closely match that. Now, the one last thing I wanna go over is let's just say your Ahrefs. You have this tool, Website Traffic Checker. It's part of their overall tool for Ahrefs. And I'm saying, I don't know what keywords are the best for this landing page. What you can do is take the actual page itself and you can see the start trial right here. I'm, I'm sure they probably use this as a landing page, but if we take this page right here and we copy it and we come back over to the Google Keyword Planner, what you can actually do is we'll come back to the front page. Under discover new keywords, you can start with a website and you can enter a specific page and you can either use your entire website. So this is another way to kind of get started with what you want to promote. Problem is it's gonna give you too many keywords in my opinion, but what you can do is say, I wanna use only this page and I wanna get results. Now using just a single page, they gave me 382 keywords and they have keywords by relevance. So it's giving me basically the best keywords that are gonna most closely match this page. So if I'm creating an ad group, I can say, okay, let me target website traffic estimator. See best free website traffic checker maybe I wanna get rid of the word free and add that as a negative keyword so that people don't think that it's gonna be a free tool and people who are looking for a free tool aren't gonna click on our advertisement and just bounce immediately to look for a free tool. Site traffic checker, website traffic analysis, website visitor checker. So you get all of these different keywords that you can target within your ad group. See, so in this specific ad group, you could have hundreds of different keywords and they all go to that main landing page here. So this is a great way to find additional keywords for your landing pages, and you don't need to basically use single keyword ad groups. So those were always a very popular thing with Google Ads, but now you really don't have to focus on that. I focus mainly on what landing page am I sending traffic to, and what are the keywords that are gonna most closely match that landing page. So these are some different ways to do Google Ads keyword research. To come back over here just to summarize the video, Understanding Google Ads keyword matching, I would highly, highly recommend targeting phrase match keywords for the most part. Broad match keywords is gonna lead to worse campaign performance and exact match keywords might limit your overall search volume. Now, creating a list of landing pages, that helps you understand where you wanna drive traffic to, what your main keywords and what your long tail keywords are for those landing pages. Then you wanna list the main keyword for each landing page because that's the keyword that you can use to come up with a bunch of relevant long tail keywords. Again, you don't need to target 100 keywords per ad group, but it does help to have some different keywords just to make sure you're targeting everything. Expanding your keyword list for each page. 
So as you go through, you wanna make sure you find all the best keywords for each page. You can also find negative keywords. For example, that keyword free, when people are looking up their website traffic for Ahrefs, that's something they can add as, add as negative keyword to make sure you're just taking out that traffic altogether. Last but not least, create an additional keyword list. You don't necessarily have to do this, but it's nice to kind of come over here and say, okay, here's a bunch of different additional keywords, and I can use those to create content for those keywords and maybe eventually run advertisements to those pages down the line. So at this point, I've gone over the Google Keyword Planner pretty extensively throughout this course, but in case you still have questions or you're still looking for a little bit more information for every little detail of the Google Keyword Planner, this next portion of the video will show that to you. So let's get into how to use the Google Keyword Planner from start to finish. So the first part of this video is accessing the Google Keyword Planner and the best way to do that is to start by creating a Google Ads account if you don't have one already. Once you have a Google Ads account and you're all set up and ready to start running campaigns, what you can do is just go directly to this page right here and I'll put this link in the video description so you can easily find it. So what you want to do is click on go to keyword planner and that's going to open up the keyword planner and give you a page that looks like this. Now if you've never used Google Ads before and if you've never used the keyword planner before, you might run into an issue when you create a new account, you're going to see screens that might look like this. What's your main advertising goal? If you do see the screen, what you want to do is click on experienced with Google Ads. Now it might bring you into a new screen saying to create a new campaign and select the campaign type that you'd like to create. So what you want to do is click on create an account without a campaign. That's going to allow you to get into the Google Ads interface where you can access the Keyword Planner. So let's get into the Keyword Planner and get started. So now getting started with the Keyword Planner, the first thing I want to go over is I have an old Google Ads account here that I use for tutorials in the past and I don't have an active campaign running. So what might happen if you start using the Google Keyword Planner for the first time, let's just say you enter a keyword here, you want to find more keywords related to keyword research. So we're going to click on get results. So what the Keyword Planner is going to do is bring us the most relevant keywords based on whatever keywords we enter at the very top here. And you can see for average monthly searches, they're giving us a range of data. And at the very bottom here, you're going to see to get more detailed statistics, run a campaign. So if you're looking for more information in terms of the exact number of average monthly searches and to get the full Google Keyword Planner, what you want to do is run a Google Ads campaign. However, I wouldn't worry too much about knowing the exact number of average monthly searches because having a range of data is not the end of the world. Basically, this says there's 100 to 1,000 average monthly searches for Suval. So what that means is there might be 500 average monthly searches, for example. So it doesn't really matter that much that you have the exact number here. You can still target these keywords when you're creating content or for your Google Ads campaigns. So what I want to do next is show you the features of the Google Keyword Planner and I'm going to come over to my other account where I actually have the search volume data and everything like that so we can look at the full version of the Keyword Planner. Now when you get in your Google Ads account, if you go to Tools and Settings and then under Planning in the menu, you can click on Keyword Planner to find this. Otherwise, just go to this page here, click on Go to Keyword Planner and it will open up this screen. So I want to start, the first thing I want to go over is how to use keywords to expand your keyword list. So you can see here it says start with keywords. So what you wanna do is enter products or services closely related to your business. Now you might have to do this multiple times if your business has a bunch of different products for sale. For example, if I come to my website Farmhouse Goals, I would do different searches for bedding, for curtains, for decor, for furniture, for lighting, because you don't wanna to try to find all of these keywords at once. What you can do is, for example, for farmhouse bedding, I can come in here and say, just enter some different related keywords that I know are related to bedding. So quilts, comforters. So all these different types of keywords is a great way to get started and to expand my keyword list specifically for farmhouse bedding. So I'm going to get rid of these for now. So let's just say I want to expand my keyword list for farmhouse furniture. So there's a couple different ways you could search here. You can start with keywords, which I'm going to show you or you could start with a website using either the entire website or a specific page. So starting with keywords, let's just say enter farmhouse furniture and we'll enter some related keywords here. So tables. Okay, so I've entered nine keywords here, all related to furniture and some of the more popular types of furniture that people are looking for for the house. 
So you can enter a domain to use as a filter. So it will filter out services, products, or brands that you don't offer. I generally don't do this, so I'm not gonna do this now. And you can see here, their tip is to try not to be too specific or general. So meal delivery is better than meals for a food delivery business. So essentially you wanna be entering keywords here that you think potential customers are gonna search in Google to find a business like yours. So using these keywords, we can click on get results. And this is the first way to look for keywords and to find a huge list of keywords. Now I'm gonna go through every part of the keyword planner coming up. I just wanna show you some different ways to actually get to this screen where you have a ton of keywords. So entering these keywords here gave me over 6,000 keyword ideas, which really is just too many. So I'll show you how to filter out some of these different keywords. But if we scroll down, it's gonna give me the keywords by relevance. So the most relevant keywords based on what I entered. And just going through here, you can see I already have a ton of keywords I can start to target with my content and with some of the products I'm selling on my website. So this is really helpful as you're trying to find different ways to target people based on what they're searching related to your business. So we're gonna come back over here and the other way you can find keywords is to start with a website. So starting with a website allows you to enter your entire website or a specific page on your website. And what the Google Keyword Planner is gonna do is return a huge list of keyword ideas again. And it's all gonna be keywords that they find the most relevant to our website. Okay, so I've used the entire site farmhousegoals.com and we're gonna click on get results. And then I'm gonna go back to the keyword option and I'm gonna go through every part of the keyword planner. So we'll click on get results now. Okay, so using our website. Now I don't use the website option that often, but what you can see is it's giving me the most relevant keywords on my website. So these are all different keywords that I know I have specific pages for. I have a page on my website for farmhouse TV stands for sale. I have page on my website for modern farmhouse coffee tables, for farmhouse coffee table sets. But the other thing you're gonna find here are different keywords that are really just generic keywords that are not really completely related to my website. I don't target just the keyword bar stools. I target the keyword farmhouse bar stools. So if you enter your website and you do average monthly searches, it's gonna give you a ton of keywords here that are gonna be extremely popular. So a ton of average monthly searches, but very, very difficult to rank for. So that's why I generally don't use my website. I prefer to just enter keywords and then go through the different keyword ideas they give me. So let's go back to the keyword ideas. And for this, I'm just gonna enter a few different furniture keywords. So we'll do farmhouse furniture. Okay, so we just have four keywords here and we're gonna click on get results again. And now we're looking at the, mo the keywords that they gave us by relevance. So if we scroll down again, these are all very relevant keywords based on the ones that I entered. Now the next thing I wanna go over is average monthly searches here, the three month change, year over year change, competition, and then the top of page bid and the top of page bid high range. So they give you the low range and the high range. The other thing you'll see over here is account status. So if you're already bidding on a keyword, it's gonna show in account here. So I'm bidding on some of these keywords in my campaign. So you can see it's showing that it's in my account. So we'll scroll back over and I'll start with average monthly searches. So if we scroll to the top, you can see they give you the average monthly searches here. So for some companies and businesses, there's a ton of seasonality. This, there isn't a ton here, so it kind of dips a little bit in the summer. Pretty popular, showing in January 2021. And it's giving us the data from the previous 12 months. So it's actually December 2021. So what we can do is say all available, and it's gonna give us from January 2018 to December 2021. So you can see it's grown pretty well, almost doubled basically from 2018 until about 2020, 2021. So there's a ton more searches now. So it's always good to see growth in terms of search volume. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and just look at average monthly searches for all these keywords here. And if you scroll over, it'll show you the average monthly search volume for each individual keyword and how it kind of goes throughout the year. So obviously if you're looking at things that with Christmas and different things like that, it's gonna, show you a spike around November and December. So something like Christmas trees, which it showed earlier, obviously has a huge spike in the beginning of December. So this can be really useful if you're looking to target a specific keyword and you wanna look for when the most searches happen. So if you're trying to optimize for different times of the year, I could say, okay, usually in May or in June or July, this keyword tends to peak. 
So I wanna make sure three, four months beforehand, I'm already optimized for this keyword so I can take advantage of that search traffic. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you're looking for average monthly searches. The other thing I like to look at, so competition, basically every single keyword on this list is high competition. And that means there's a lot of advertisers bidding on these keywords. So competition is looking at the total number of advertisers that are bidding on each keyword. And it says relative to all keywords across Google. So sometimes you'll see competition as medium or low. So that means there just aren't as many advertisers bidding on those keywords. And to look at a little bit more about bids, there's top of page bid, the low range, and top of page bid, the high range. So this gives you an idea of how much advertisers are bidding on these different keywords. It can be very useful as you're setting your own bids for Google Ads or trying to kind of understand how much you think you're gonna end up paying per click if you are targeting these keywords. So that's search volume and bids. Now the one thing I just wanna go over very quickly is you're gonna see here keyword view. So the other thing I like to look at sometimes is grouped view, and this almost separates your keywords into Google Ads ad groups. So it's gonna to group together similar keywords. But what I do like about this is even at the very top, you could see bookshelf. So this is a good keyword that I can target. And if we click on this drop down arrow, you can see it pulls down some different long tail keywords related to farmhouse bookshelves. So if you are creating a page about the best farmhouse bookshelves, I can make sure I have a list of modern farmhouse bookshelves, of white farmhouse bookshelves. So just some of the different things that people are looking up pretty frequently and it's gonna help me create my content and kind of optimize it towards what people are searching for the most. So that's grouped view. So let's come back over to keyword view. Now we can keep going through this. They give you a ton of different groups, but if we come back over here to keyword view, when you do a search and in the keyword planner and you get your results, you're usually gonna have refined keywords. So if we refine keywords, what you can do is exclude brand or non-brand keywords. You can exclude, if since I'm looking up furniture here, I can say, you know what, I don't want anything related to TV stands, I don't want anything related to stools. I've already have those keywords covered so I can remove them all together. So it helps you get rid of some different keywords. It also helps you see some of the different keywords they pulled out. So farmhouse wardrobe, for example, is a keyword I haven't targeted yet. So that's something I know I can target. So refine keywords is good for not only excluding keywords, but also seeing where you might have gaps in what you're targeting with your content. Now, what I generally do here is for brand or non-brand keywords, I don't target most brand keywords for farmhouse goals. Some types of products I will, which I'll show you in a second, but for stores, I'm not targeting Pottery Barn farmhouse furniture, so I'm gonna get rid of all these stores altogether. If we keep scrolling down, they have other brands. So if I do carry some of these different brands, I might not wanna get rid of them. For example, if I have Walker Edison products, there's no reason for me to exclude that keyword, but what you can do is exclude the other brands here, and it helps just to refine the keywords, and we went from 4,300 keywords to 3,800 keywords. So it's a great way to remove keywords that you weren't gonna target altogether. Now, if we keep scrolling down, you can see they have room here. So they're gonna come up with a bunch of things that you can refine based on what you type in. So it's gonna be different for every single search and the different products or services you're looking up. They're gonna give you different ways to refine your keywords. But you can see down here, there's different things that I can get rid of altogether if I know I'm not gonna be targeting them. And that's where refine keywords really comes into play. You can reset it, you can expand all of these so you can go through each individual one. For right now, I'm just gonna click on the X. That's refined keywords. You can see I have 77 concepts excluded. Helps you get rid of keywords. Again, you're just not targeting. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go over is some different ways to refine your targeting and use filters. So if we go to the top here, you can see it's set for United States as where I'm targeting. If you're not targeting the entire United States, you can get rid of this and enter the location here that you're targeting. For example, let's just say you serve the state of Texas. You can choose that as a state. Let's say you're just in Los Angeles County. You can go to Los Angeles and you can target the Nielsen DMA region. You could actually target Los Angeles County. So you can choose exactly where you're targeting. And then what that's gonna give you is the average monthly searches for that specific area rather than the entire United States. 
for a local service company, for example, let's just say you're a plumbing company, you target the entirety of Los Angeles County, and then you're only gonna see the keywords that are relevant for that area and the average monthly search volume for those keywords. So you're not gonna see how many people are searching it in Boston or how many people are searching it in Minnesota or anywhere around the country. You're just gonna see that specific region. So I usually just keep my location as United States, so we'll keep it as that for right now, but I just wanted to show that to you. So we'll click on cancel. Next for language targeting, so you can actually choose different languages here, and what you wanna do is target the languages that your customers speak. So I usually just keep this as English, so that's another option that you have. Now you're gonna see Google and Google and search partners. I usually just leave this as Google. I just think the end search partners isn't giving you exact data, and I prefer to just focus on Google. When it comes to search volume, I'm usually just looking at the last 12 months. That's usually automatically what it's gonna give you, but you can look further back just to see maybe search volume's increasing, maybe it's decreasing, and you can see trends throughout the year again for seasonality, for different types of keywords, people looking for different things throughout the year. So that's some different options you have when it comes to targeting. Now the other thing you can do is they usually give you broaden your search here and they're gonna give you some different options for keywords that you can target. So I could say, let me target farmhouse dining room furniture, farmhouse furnishings. I can add these to broaden my search. I'm just gonna keep my search as is, but it's an option that you do have. We've already went over refined keywords, so we're gonna scroll down here and go over filters. So filters can be used for a variety of reasons. You can do keyword text must contain a certain keyword. You can do it does not contain a certain keyword. And if you wanna enter multiple keywords, I can say, I wanna make sure my keyword text contains farmhouse or rustic. So we're gonna click on apply. And I don't think that removed all that many keywords from our list, but just an option that you have for either keyword text must contain something, or let's say it does not contain things like cheap, affordable, I could do budget friendly, you can enter free here. For furniture, I could do something like near me and click on apply. And now any keyword here that was near me is gonna get removed. So sometimes it's a good way to get rid of some different keywords that you know you do not want to target. Okay, next if we come into filters again, so average monthly searches, I'm gonna go through that in a second. Competition, if you're looking for specific competition, low, medium, high, you can choose that. So I usually don't do competition here that often. So if we come and do more filters, add impression share. So that's something here that you can that you can optimize by and that's gonna actually take the data from your Google Ads account. So you can see for the most part, I don't have a high enough impression share for any of these keywords because I have a very limited budget for the campaign I'm running. This one is showing that I have less than 1% ad impression share and the rest, if you get a dash here, just means you don't have enough data. So I don't really have much here that I can use to refine my keyword list, so I'm not really gonna worry about that. Top of page bid, low range, you can choose whether or not you want the top of page bid to be a certain amount on the low range or the high range. Again, not something I'm gonna do at this point. If you're building a SEO keyword list, you don't really need to worry about any of these down here. Now, one thing you might wanna do is average monthly searches. So some different options here, you can say average monthly searches is greater than or equal to, let's just say 100. So there's gonna be a bunch of keywords at the bottom of the list here that have barely any average monthly searches. And if we just look at them real quick, so we'll look by low to high, you're gonna see some of these down here have zero searches. And some of them are just gonna be things I'm not really gonna target specifically with my website. So what I might wanna do is let's just use average monthly searches and say it must be at least 100 average monthly searches for us to target it. Okay, so you can see here now it's showing 1100 keyword ideas. So that got rid of a ton of keyword ideas that are probably at the very bottom of the list. What we could always do down the line is go back and look at some of those keywords that might be less than 100. The other thing you can do is add a filter and say average monthly searches must be between 100 and 1000, for example. And what that's gonna do is give you a ton of keywords that might not have a ton of average monthly searches, but they're gonna be a little bit less competitive and they're gonna be easier to rank for than something like farmhouse dining table where there are a ton of advertisers bidding on this keyword and there are a ton of huge websites that have farmhouse dining tables for sale. So it's very difficult to rank for a keyword like this with 33,000 average monthly searches. That is a very valuable keyword. 
So sometimes you can look through ranges of data using the average monthly searches here, and it gives you a ton of opportunities. So some of the best keywords on my website are keywords with less than 1,000, less than 500 average monthly searches, because they're easier to rank for and easier to get on that first page of Google for. So we're gonna get rid of, click on the X here for now, and what we have is 1,100, almost 1,200 keyword ideas related to farmhouse furniture. So what you can do now is download this list either as a CSV file or what we can do is download it using Google Sheets. So if we click on that, you're gonna see a file name and then it's gonna to save to a specific folder. So I'm not gonna be doing the Google Sheets right now, but you can see how easy it is to download to Google Sheets if you do use Google Sheets. So what we can do is we'll download the CSV file and just open it just to show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is what the file looks like and they're gonna give you all the different keywords that we have here, the average monthly searches, we have the three month change, the year over year change, so some of the different trends, the bidding, the competition level in a form of a number, and then they actually give you searches by month. So this is January 2021, this is February 2021. So they're actually giving us how many searches for these individual keywords for each month so if we scroll down, you're gonna see there's a ton of keywords here. So usually what I do when I'm creating an SEO keyword list is I go through this list and I pull out every keyword that I find unique. So something, for example, like a farmhouse filing cabinet. So as I'm coming up with different keywords related to farmhouse cabinets, farmhouse filing cabinet is something I can target specifically with a page that's just listing the top rated farmhouse themed filing cabinets for sale. And it could be something that I used on my page for farmhouse office furniture. So that's kind of the way that I look at it. Farmhouse trunk coffee table, that's something that I can optimize for on my farmhouse coffee tables page. And maybe I try to put together a list of different products for sale through the shop of my website of farmhouse trunk style coffee tables. Now something like farmhouse style cabinets, that's not a keyword I would really optimize for altogether. It's just, I view that as the same exact keyword as farmhouse cabinets. However, as I am optimizing for something like farmhouse beds, farmhouse bed frames, I can say farmhouse twin bed frames. That's something with 590 average monthly searches. So that's something that's worth optimizing for. So as you scroll down here and you start looking for more and more keywords, you're really trying to find keywords that, even if it's something like 390 searches, a farmhouse linen cabinet, a farmhouse display cabinet, these are different things you can try to optimize your website for by creating pages where I'm listing products for those types of keywords for sale. So it's gonna give you a ton of different ideas. Now something over here like rustic farmhouse entryway bench, I would just target the keyword farmhouse entryway bench. So some different ways to look at keywords is you don't need to say, I need to optimize for every single keyword that's here. What you really wanna say is, okay, farmhouse bar table, that's a good keyword to optimize for. Farmhouse chest, that's a good keyword to optimize for by itself. Liquor cabinet, that's one to optimize for by itself. So these are different pages I can create on my website, whereas something like white farmhouse cabinet, I might just wanna put that specifically on the cabinets page. So some different ways to look at keywords is to kind of understand which ones you can pull out as their own topic, and other ones are really just gonna be viewed as a subtopic within basically a larger category. So it can be difficult as you are doing SEO keyword research to understand the keyword intent behind each individual keyword, what people are actually looking for, what you can actually optimize for and rank on Google with. So that's something you're trying to always improve as you go. But if you do come up with a keyword list like this one with over a thousand keywords, as you keep coming down, you're just going to have a ton of keywords here that you're really not going to ever, ever really optimize for because it's just not worth it ultimately. So this is how to kind of do SEO keyword research using the Google Keyword Planner. The other thing that you can do is if you are trying to expand keywords for an existing page, so let's just say for example, I have a page about farmhouse coffee tables and I'm trying to find every relevant keyword to farmhouse coffee tables. What you could do is search that keyword and click on get results. And what we can do is look at the most relevant keywords based on what we entered. And you can see here, so white farmhouse coffee tables, square farmhouse coffee tables, lift top coffee tables. So making sure I have all of these variations on my page where I am trying to sell farmhouse coffee tables. And then some of these, for example, round farmhouse coffee table, that's something I can create a separate product category for. 
Now you can also, to take it one step further, is let's get rid of this, go to a website. You can use a specific page. So I can enter the Farmhouse Coffee Tables page on my website, and then it will just pull keywords from that page and try to find the most relevant keywords. And I need to make sure that I'm optimized for those keywords as best as possible. Okay, so the next and last thing that I'm gonna go over is how to create a Google Ads campaign through the Google Keyword Planner. So you can actually build a keyword plan and publish it to Google Ads. And I did just create a full video about this topic on my channel. I will link that video in the description. So if you're interested in building a Google Ads campaign using the Google Keyword Planner from start to finish. But what I wanna show you is a few different ways that you can build a keyword plan and forecast some data. So if we click on broaden your search, we'll just add some of these different keywords here. So farmhouse table, farmhouse chairs, and we'll just do farmhouse furniture. So kind of the same ones that we looked up before. And we click on get results again. So if we scroll down here, so what we can do is select individual keywords and you can see here we have the keyword selected. We could either add it to, a, to our plan or to an existing campaign. So if we click on existing campaign, I can take the campaign that I'm running right now and add this keyword to it, create a separate ad group, and it will allow me to start targeting more and more keywords within my campaign. Now, if we don't have a campaign yet to add it to, what we wanna do is add it to our plan. We wanna create a new ad group. So let's just say our ad group matches the keyword that we are targeting. The way I look at ad groups as I'm building a Google Ads campaign is they should all have a landing page that is really relevant to the keywords in the ad group and I can create advertisements that actually match what people are searching for. So when I'm creating a new ad group for farmhouse coffee tables, I wanna add this keyword in here. We're gonna click on create to create this new ad group. And then you wanna select your keyword match type. I generally go with phrase match keywords. I think it gives you the best of broad and exact where you have plenty of search volume and the searches are gonna be relevant to the keywords that I enter. So we're gonna click on add keyword here. And now what that's gonna do is start building our keyword plan. So if we click on keyword plan here, you can see we have one saved keyword and it's gonna show the average monthly search volume for that keyword. So if we come back over to keyword ideas, we can continue to build our plan. We'll just add a couple more here. So we're gonna add farmhouse table to a plan. We would create an ad group, do farmhouse tables, click on create, phrase match keyword, and we'll add that keyword. Farmhouse chairs, so the same thing. I would create new ad groups for all of these. I don't want people who are looking specifically for farmhouse chairs to land on a page with farmhouse tables or farmhouse coffee tables. So what you can try to do is create ad groups and really keep it as organized as possible. Something like chairs and tables because they have so many variations. What you might wanna do is, we'll do farmhouse chairs, our new ad group, is do an exact match keyword because that's gonna keep the keyword relevancy as high as possible for those ad groups that are really much more broad. Whereas something like, if we come down here a little bit, farmhouse desk, I would target the phrase match keyword for farmhouse desk. So for example, farmhouse table and chairs. So if we're targeting the phrase match for that keyword, it could go into either one of these ad groups. So that's where you might wanna use exact match as you're creating your plan. So we'll just enter exact match here just to keep going with the example. But what we can do is if you do have a whole campaign built here, and let's just say you created a huge plan, you have hundreds of keywords, what you can do is forecast that data. So if you come over to forecast, it's gonna show our draft plan. You can see bid strategy to maximize clicks, or you can choose manual CPC. I would recommend just doing maximize clicks here. And then you can update your location targeting, your language targeting. I usually just keep this as Google. And what it's showing me, since I'm recording this in January 2022, it's showing me the forecast data for the following month. So it's giving me February 1st to the 28th, 2022, the forecast data. So I'm obviously only targeting three keywords here. You would wanna target much more than that. But if I come in here and let's just say my conversion rate is 5%, my value per conversion is $25. So we'll click on save. So it's showing that with a $15 average daily budget, I would get 44 conversions for $420. So my cost for the campaign would be $420. I would drive 880 clicks. My click-through rate would be 3.9%. And it's actually showing my conversion value at $1.1,000 with a return on ad spend of 2.6 or 260%. So my average CPA would be $9.51. And then my value per conversion here is $25. 
Obviously, these are pretty generous numbers, 5% conversion rate, $25 value per conversion. So if your conversion rate is 2%, if your value per conversion is $15, then you might not see the same exact overall value from a campaign, $420 in cost, $270 in conversion value. So if you know your value per conversion on average, maybe using Google Analytics data, maybe using the data you have from Shopify or whatever you're selling, whatever it is, if you know your conversion rate and your value per conversion, you can enter that here and it just gives you more data so you can understand what to expect from your campaign. Now, if we adjust our bid strategy at the top here to manual CPC, one thing you might see is if we do set a max cost per click, you can see it's gonna show what you can get from this campaign if you adjust your max cost per click up or down. So you're eventually gonna reach these points where there's no reason to keep increasing your max cost per click because it's only gonna hurt your overall conversion rate. But as you come down, you might be able to say, okay, if I set my max CPC at 94 cents, so click down here, we have $1.62 for example, my cost is gonna be 3.4 thousand, my conversion value still really not good enough to run this campaign, but you can kind of have an understanding using this forecast data of how much you're gonna get for your campaign. Now what we can do next is click on create campaign, just name it, choose an average daily budget. So they're recommending a very high budget here. I could say I want a $10 daily budget. Click on save and it will launch the campaign. All we need to do is create our advertisements and our campaign will start running. Now last but not least, I'm gonna click on cancel one more time. If we come over to tools and settings, planning, we click on the keyword planner. If you're working on a plan, so for example, this is the one we were just working on. This is one I implemented previously, so it was last modified a couple days ago. It will save your plan for years. So if you are working on a plan, you can continue to work on it and work on it and work on it over time and then launch your campaign when you're ready. So the keyword planner is a great way to build Google ads campaigns. Now the other thing you can do is get search volume and forecast. I prefer to just to create a plan and go to the forecast like I showed you. But ultimately, to use the keyword planner, click on discover new keywords, start with keywords here. If, let's just say for example, advanced auto parts reached out to me and said, we wanna promote everything on our website, I would basically go one category at a time. So if we look at brakes here, you can see, I would enter the keyword brakes, I would do brake pads, brake shoes, brake rotors, brake calipers. I would enter all of these different keywords here to find as many keywords as possible related to brakes and then you would keep doing this for all of these different categories. Obviously keyword research can take a very long time, but it is vital to come up with these keyword lists, for example, like this one that we built here, to really understand the types of keywords that people are typing in. And what you wanna do is go through your keyword list, pull out the topics that you know you can target with your website and the targets you wanna rank for, and the more and more that you do that, the better and better you create content and create pages whether it's products on the pages, whether it is just general information, the higher you will rank over time. So that is my Google Keyword Planner tutorial. Come to Google Ads, get started with using it. If you're creating campaigns, if you're doing search engine optimization research, it's a very great free keyword research tool. Even if you don't get all the data for average monthly searches, you still get a ton of ideas. The next portion of this course is gonna be focused on YouTube keyword research. So if you are creating videos and you're trying to grow a YouTube channel, it can be really helpful to understand how to find the top YouTube keywords based on the types of content that you're creating. So in this next part of the video, I'm gonna be going over how to do YouTube keyword research in 2022 and how to create a keyword list that is specific for YouTube videos. So five different things that I use Keywords Everywhere, Keyword It, and KeywordTool.io are all free keyword research tools. Now you can also use the Google Keyword Planner, but I'm not gonna be going through that in this video. I'm just gonna be focused on these three keyword research tools, and then also how to use the YouTube search results, and then how to research using popularity, both popular topics, and then maybe some popular things within that would fit into your YouTube channel. So for this example, I'm gonna be pretending like I'm creating three fake YouTube channels, one about WordPress tutorials, one about horror movies, and one about just Nintendo Switch in general. So let's get started with Keywords Everywhere. This is my favorite keyword research tool outside of the Google Keyword Planner. So with Keywords Everywhere, if you go to keywordseverywhere.com, you can install their Chrome extension or their Firefox extension, and just using the free version, 
if I go to Google and let's just say I search WordPress in Google, we scroll down here and we look on the right hand side, they're going to come up with a huge list of long tail keywords here. So 20 of the most popular long tail keywords related to WordPress. And just looking at these long tail keywords, I can come up with at least 10 different video ideas. So that's where I like to start is with keywords everywhere. The other great thing about this is you can go to YouTube and just enter a search term here, WordPress. If, for example, for me, I could do something like Google ads or Facebook ads or something like that. And then over on the right hand side, you can see find YouTube keywords for WordPress. And if you click that, it's going to open up a huge list of YouTube keywords related to WordPress. And the only thing you're not going to get search volume here, but what I found is they generally put these keywords in order of how popular they are. So you can see here, WordPress tutorial for beginners, WordPress tutorial. Obviously I would look at those as the same exact keyword or the same exact topic, but how to create a WordPress website full WordPress course, WordPress e-commerce websites, WordPress Elementor, WordPress SEO, theme development. So there's a ton of different keywords here that you can use that will help you get started with creating different topics for your YouTube channel. So coming back over here, just clicking on this link right here on the right hand side of YouTube, once you install the keywords everywhere extension, and then also when you do a search in Google, you can find a ton of different long tail keyword ideas. So this is going to help you get started by coming up with a ton of different topics. Now the next tool that I'm going to be going over is keyword it. So this tool actually uses Reddit to come up with some different ideas for you. So let's use our horror movies example. So if we come over here and looking at horror movies, let's just say, I don't know where to start, but if I come over to the Reddit keyword research tool, and I'll put this link in the video description, it's highervisibility.com. And what you want to do right here is search for a subreddit that would most match your YouTube channel. So in this case, they have a specific horror, you know, this is just horror movies and horror TV shows. So if we click on get keywords, what the Reddit keyword research tool is gonna do is it's gonna look through the horror subreddit on Reddit, and it's gonna pull out a bunch of the top keywords. And what's good about this tool is you can come up with a bunch of unique topics. So you can see something here, Sean Penn movies. So you can see, hey, what horror movies is Sean Penn in? If there's not a lot, then maybe it's not worth making a video for. But as we come down here, you're gonna find a ton of different ideas. New alien movie, Resident Evil movie, keep coming down, and you can just find a ton of different ideas here. So as you go through, you can kind of find, okay, maybe I'll create a video about the best John Carpenter movies. Maybe I'll create a video about the best David Lynch movies, and kind of go through all of these different, and these are basically just keywords that you can use as topics for your videos. So it's, there's a ton here, you know, as you keep scrolling down, I wouldn't focus too much on the search volume over here, because what you're really trying to do is just come up with video ideas for your channel. And even just looking, you know, right here, top horror films, and we start coming down horror comedy movies, sci-fi movies, maybe say the best horror sci-fi movies, the Silent Hill series, Bruce Campbell. So you're coming up with a lot of these different topics. And as you build out your YouTube channel and you're creating more and more videos, it really helps to have all of these different topics. So that's number two is gonna be keyword it. So if we come back over here, number two for keyword it. So that's gonna give you a ton of different ideas. And if we do a quick search for Nintendo Switch as well, so we'll come to the top, okay, and we scroll down, you can see there's a ton of just unique keywords and unique topics that will really help you create a bunch of new videos. And it's not just your standard, okay, here's the most popular keywords. It's basically, hey, here are a bunch of keywords that appear a lot within this subreddit. So it's showing that people who are talking about these different you know, topics related to your YouTube channel, the things they are most interested in. So top two, keywords everywhere, keyworded. I like both of these and I use them pretty frequently. Uh, the next one is gonna be keywordtool.io. So if we come back over and we open up keywordtool.io, they actually have specific search engines for YouTube, Bing, Amazon, eBay. So you can look up keyword research for all these different search engines. So if we click on YouTube here, and let's just say we're gonna use our WordPress example again. So we'll say WordPress, and we're gonna search. Okay, so at the very top, you can see 402 unique keywords. You can see a lot of these keywords are the same ones that we saw with the Keywords Everywhere tool. But what I really like about using keywordtool.io is they start giving you the top keywords and they do them alphabetical. So you're gonna see right here, WordPress app, WordPress API, WordPress advanced tutorial. So these are the top keywords basically from A to Z. 
So WordPress app, as we keep coming down, WordPress blog, WordPress blog tutorial for beginners. So if you go through and just kind of say, okay, I can do a video about WordPress basics, WordPress backup. So as you're creating your list of keywords, and let's just say I do WordPress basics, WordPress backup, what you can do is take these keywords and say, okay, how to backup your WordPress website. So very simple to go from keyword to content idea by using keywordtool.io. And what I've found is the alphabetical keywords they give you. So as you get into C, as you get into D, these different keywords at the very top for each letter are gonna be the most popular. So WordPress contact form, if we come over here and say WordPress contact form, so you could do content idea, best contact form plugin for WordPress. So very simple to go from keyword to content idea. And then all you have to do is focus on creating really great videos and people will continue to come back and watch your content. So if we come back over here, that's the first three. So all completely free keyword research tools. And then number four, using the YouTube search results. So sometimes you might be saying, okay, I don't know what to do with this keyword. Let's just say something like WordPress basics. You're like, I don't know what to do with this keyword. I'm gonna use a different example here, but all you need to do is go to YouTube, search WordPress basics right here, see what comes up. So if I don't know what to create when it comes to videos for the Nintendo Switch, why not look at the most popular videos? So we just search Nintendo Switch, we scroll down. So 25 new Switch games. Nintendo Switch review, top 10 Nintendo Switch games. So you can already see, okay, maybe I should really focus on creating lists of the top games. So as we keep coming down, where to start? So basically how to use the Nintendo Switch. Right here, you're starting to get some different ideas of, okay, this is what people are actually watching, 2.1 million views. And if you know how to use the Nintendo Switch very well, it should be easy to create a 15, 20, 30 minute video for how to get started with it. And as you keep coming down, you can find even more videos so unboxing pretty simple you purchase a switch you unbox it show everything that's in the box keep coming down an announcement trailer now some of these are from nintendo themselves so it's kind of hard to recreate some of these but even as we keep coming down there's a video down here and you can see kind of how many options you have to create so seven new exciting games coming to nintendo switch in january 2022 so this was created eight days ago. So if you say, okay, at the beginning of every month, I'm gonna go over the 10 top games for this month. At the beginning of the year, you say, here are the best games that you should buy in 2022. Maybe you create a video about, you know, which Nintendo Switch games are coming out. So it gives you a lot of ideas by just simply using the YouTube search results. Now, in addition to using keywords everywhere, so as we come to the top here, you can also click find YouTube keywords for Nintendo Switch, and that's gonna give you a ton more ideas. So coming into number five, researching using popularity. So let's just say, I don't know really where to get started with Nintendo Switch. What you can do is basically go to the game store. You could use Best Buy, you could use the Nintendo game store, you could use GameStop. And if we scroll down here, you can say Nintendo Switch best sellers. So the best sellers are obviously the games that people are gonna be looking up the most videos for. So if I have a huge section on my Nintendo Switch channel about Minecraft, Maybe I say, okay, let me do Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Tricks or different things like that. You can come up with a ton of ideas. And let's just say I'm using Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I purchased that, I'm playing the game. And what I wanna do is I wanna create a video about that. What you can do is just enter that search term right into YouTube. So you can see 8 Deluxe, maybe you wanna enter that. And you could see unboxing, gameplay, two player. So there's not a ton here, but you can see tips and tricks at the bottom. But let's just say we search this, again, using popularity, so basically using the best sellers for Nintendo Switch, and then using the YouTube search results, you can say, okay, what should I kind of create on YouTube so that I can get more views? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Gameplay Walkthrough Part 1. So this is an hour-long video of someone playing the game and going over how to play it. So you can see Deluxe Bundle, and what you want to do is try to look at which videos are getting the most views. So 807,000 views for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch, it's a 13 minute video. So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, all tracks, so full race gameplay. So you can just basically record yourself playing the game. Maybe you come up with, so you can see here, fastest cart and bike. So people are looking for tips and tricks. People are looking for gameplay. People are looking for reviews. Maybe people are looking for unboxing or some different bundles that you can purchase. 
So just using basically popularity and the search results, we have five to 10 different video ideas that we can create about this game. And then also we can include this game as we put together our list of the top games for 2022 or whatever it is. So the other example for using popularity. So coming back to horror movies, let's just say, I don't know where to get started, what people are going to look up the most. Go to something like IMDb or something that would match for whatever your YouTube channel is about. And if you just click on the menu here, we go to movies, let's say browse movies by genre. And we come over here, popular TV show and movie genres. We click on horror. It's going to come up with the most popular movies right now. So you can create videos about upcoming movies. Otherwise, what you can do is say maybe number of votes. So that's the total number of votes that people have actually submitted on IMDb that re represents that people have watched this movie a lot. So look at the movies with the most votes. The Silence of the Lambs, The Shining, so Stranger Things, the TV show, The Walking Dead. These are all different examples of ways to find popular horror movies and TV shows, and then you can create videos about them on your channel. Now, the other thing I can do here is US box office, so see which movies made the most at the box office. So that's gonna help me say, okay, people have spent a lot of money watching this movie, so It, The Exorcist, It Chapter Two, World War Z, and what you can do is create videos about these movies and also kind of combine the top 10 horror films of the 1990s, the top 10 horror films of from 2000 to 2010. So it helps you kind of come up with different lists. And then you can also go over, you know, World War Z. What, what was the movie trying to present? So different types of videos like that. If you're someone who loves horror movies, it should be easy to kind of create those types of videos. Obviously, that's not really what I'm doing, so I don't have the best examples for what type of videos people are watching, but just kind of going through some of the different examples with different channels here, WordPress, horror movies, Nintendo Switch, and then coming back over here in different ways to find these keywords and topics. Now, something like keyword it isn't gonna work for every channel. Something like researching using popularity isn't always gonna work for every channel. But what you can also do, and this is my last thing, because I use this every now and then as well, is let's just say we're using WordPress. So go right to the WordPress website and click on learn. So what you can look up is basically the types of lessons that people are looking up from WordPress. So they have workshops, they have lessons plans. So let's just say I click on workshops. I'm seeing the exact types of topics that people are looking up. So how to style your site with global styles. You can see all of these are different lesson plans and you can recreate these lesson plans on your own YouTube channel and you might be able to do it better than the way that WordPress actually presents them here. But you can see all of these right here, how to create a poster page with the WordPress block editor. That's a video that you can create for your own channel. So sometimes going within something like WordPress and I've done this before. So if you use Google ads, going right to the help center and you can see here if I'm click on explore features they have ads extensions landing pages ad groups keywords bidding targeting measure results bulk uploads and edits campaign settings these can all be separate videos I can also use these to kind of go over my complete Google Ads tutorial so these are a bunch of different ways to find keywords and topics for your YouTube channel and it's all completely free now you can also use the Google Keyword Planner and kind of come up with a list of keywords that way as well. But usually what I like to do is kind of come up with keywords like this and then come up with a content idea. Because if I say something like YouTube keyword research, for example, so that's a keyword that I came up with, what I can do is something, you know, five ways to do keyword research for your YouTube channel. Okay, and then I create a video like this, I post it to my YouTube channel, and that's how you go from keyword to content idea and how you come up with these different keywords. So, so we all wanna do things as well, if not much better than our competitors, but a lot of times our competitors are ahead of us. So doing keyword research and doing competitive analysis can be a great way to grow your website because you can find the different pages that are driving traffic to your competitors. And what you can do is create content for the same keywords that your competitors are targeting and in this portion of the video, I'm gonna be showing you some free ways to do competitor keyword research. Now, if you're looking for some paid tools, you might wanna look into tools like scmrush.com, hrefs, Moz Pro, or even spyfu.com. You can choose one of those tools and they can also be very helpful. But in this portion, I just wanna focus on free ways to do competitor keyword research. 
Now, one thing I wanna go through before I get into this video is if you're looking to do this in a great level of detail, you might wanna opt for a paid tool like SEMrush, Ahrefs, or SpyFu. All three of these will give you a lot more data than some of the tools that I'm gonna show you right now, but they all also will charge you a monthly fee. So the rest of these are gonna be options that are free. Now the other paid tool that offers some free tools that we're gonna use is Moz. So you can also look into using Moz as well. But what we really wanna start with is finding who our competitors are. So if you do go to this website at the top here, so it's analytics.moz.com, it'll pull up a bunch of their Moz Pro tools and some of the free tools that they offer as well. Now, if we come in here, one of their tools is called True Competitor. So you only get two searches every single month. So I've already used one of my searches, so I'm gonna use the second one now. And what you can do here is enter your own domain and then find the closest competitors that have the same SERPs as your website. So I'm gonna enter my domain now and we're gonna click on find competitors. Now in order to use this tool, you do need to create a free Moz account. So just create a Moz account and I will link to this URL in the video description so you can easily find it. But what you can see here is it's gonna pull up my domain first and then as we scroll down, it's gonna pull up some of my top competitors it'll show our overlap in the search results. And then they'll also give us a rivalry score as well. So basically how closely related we are to some of these different websites. So this is a great way to start by finding some of your different competitors here. And what you wanna do is look at who you have some different overlap with, what has the highest rivalry, and what you can do is pull out some of these different competitors and try to find the ones that are closest to your website. I, even though Amazon is a top one listed here, I don't really think I compete with Amazon at all, obviously. It's just I do have some overlap because they rank really high for a lot of the keywords that I'm targeting as well. You can see the same thing down here with Etsy as well. So they are competitors when it comes to some of the keywords I'm targeting, but obviously they don't view my website as a competitor. So what I try to do is find the closest competitors that are in the same exact niche that I'm in. So the other thing that you can do is just basically do a search for some of your top keywords. So in my case, farmhouse decor, I can use something like farmhouse furniture and just look at some of the different websites that are ranking high in Google. Now, the one website that always stands out in search results is antiquefarmhouse.com. You can see if I scroll down here for with Moz, you can see it's down here, antiquefarmhouse.com. And you can also see if I'm on farmhouse decor. So they have, they're right at the top of the second page for farmhouse decor. So they get a ton of traffic, a lot more traffic than my website. But what we wanna do is try to find some of their top pages and top keywords. So the way you can do that to start with is using a tool like Keywords Everywhere. So you can install this for Chrome, you can install it for a Firefox. It is a plugin or an extension that will give you a lot of different information for a different search engines like Google, Bing, YouTube, Pinterest, Amazon. So you can go to all these different search engines and they will show you a lot of detail about some of the top keywords, some long tail keywords based on what you're searching. So the other thing that they'll do is if you do a search, so I have farmhouse decor here and you find your competitor in the search engine results. If you scroll over here, for example, so we're scrolling over their traffic per month, we can click on view top pages. So when we click on view top pages, it's gonna open up a page that looks like this, and it is a top 1,000 pages for antiquefarmhouse.com. So I can actually see right here what some of their top pages are, with how many total keywords these pages have that they're ranking for, and I can see which pages on their website are driving the most traffic back to their website. Now we can also do this by using a tool like ubersuggest.com. So I've already entered antiquefarmhouse.com here, one thing you can do is upgrade to a seven day free trial and just cancel your free trial before it actually starts charging you and you're gonna get all of this data. But what we can do is scroll down here and see some of their top SEO pages and they'll show us their top 10 pages that are driving them traffic. So if we look here, just seeing some of their top pages, obviously their homepage does really well. So I can look at their homepage and try to see how I can improve my own homepage on farmhousegoals.com. But what we can see here is they have wall decor, they have ceiling lights, they have furniture, Christmas decor, lamps, tables, mirrors, curtains, and rugs. So I can kind of look at this and say, okay, I need to make sure that I have all those pages on my website and that my pages are good enough to rank, especially above my competitors. So that's really where you wanna start is trying to find some of your competitors' top pages. So once you go through this Moz tool, maybe you do some different Google searches to find some of your top competitors, what you can do is start looking at their top pages. And the way I like to do that is with keywords everywhere, 
by clicking on their top pages as I go through the Google search results. And the one thing you can see here is so if we come over here to Uber Suggest, you can see one of their top pages here is wall decor. So if I come back over to Keywords Everywhere, you can see I have wall decor here as well. So if I click on this, it's gonna actually open up the top keywords for this page. So it gives me a ton of different ideas and I can actually see what their SERP position is for all of these different keywords. So it's 622 different keywords for wall decor. So as I'm trying to optimize my own pages on my website, so if we come back over here, we scroll down, my page for wall decor is right here, so farmhouse wall decor, I can make sure that I'm doing as much as I possibly can to rank for that keyword. So that's one thing that you wanna do is starting with is finding your competitors and finding their top pages. And you can do that with Moz, you can do that with Keywords Everywhere, you can do that with Uber Suggest. And then another tool that will give you some data is seranking.com. When you come in here, you can go to competitor traffic research, enter your competitor's domain here, and you can see, so this is the page you're gonna get here, so competitive research, overview. So we have antiquefarmhouse.com. It's gonna show you their total traffic, total organic traffic, and paid traffic. If we scroll down here, you can see some of their top organic keywords. So they obviously have the first position for the keyword antique farmhouse. Their search volume is over 20,000 per month. So that drives them a ton of traffic to their homepage. But if we scroll down, we can also see, again, some organic competitors here, some really big websites though. And as we scroll down, top pages on organic search. So if we click on view detailed report, we're gonna see a lot of the same thing that we're seeing on Uber Suggest. And again, if you sign up for any of these paid services, you'll get the entire report for all of these different pages. So that's where something like SE Ranking, you can use Moz Pro, you can sign up for SpyFu, Ahrefs, or SEMrush, and get all of that data. So I'm just showing you a free option here. Now one more website I wanna go through is similarweb.com. So you can enter your competitor's website here. You can also enter your own website and it will pull up some of your competitors, it'll pull up some of your top pages, and different things like that. So just another tool to find more data about a competitor. But once you have your competitor, you find some of their top pages, you wanna to start to expand on that by actually finding some of the keywords that they're targeting. So there's different tools you can use in order to find your competitor's top keywords and even some of their top pages. So if you're looking for their most shared content, you can enter their URL into buzzsumo.com. And when you enter their URL here, so I have antiquefarmhouse.com, you can find which of their pages have the most engagement. So looking at different shares on some of these different social media channels, so you can see most of this is just Pinterest, and this will work better for certain niches. It's not the greatest for something like decor, but for something like news or something like sports, you can find a lot of websites top content, and you can use that content to actually guide your own content decisions. So as we scroll down here, I can look at some of their top pages by shares on Pinterest, and it will give me some ideas for different products I might wanna add to my own website. So the next thing we can do is after we're looking at some of these top pages on our competitor's website, we can use Moz again. So again, we're using some of their free tools here. They give us 10 total searches per month for ranking keywords. So you can enter 10 different competitors here. I enter just antiquefarmhouse.com, clicked on analyze. And if we scroll down, you can see over 9,000 ranking keywords. But what I can see is which keywords are ranking first if we scroll down here, all of these are ranking, they have the top position in the search results for all of these different keywords here. And then as we come down, we can see which are ranking second, and they'll give us the first page data there. So as we click on two, it's gonna stop giving us data. So it'll give us these first 50 keywords, and it can help us kind of understand some of the different keywords that we can target that I'm not actually going after yet. So for example, let's come to the top again. So monthly volume here, that can help guide some of our decisions. So something like rustic farmhouse chairs, I can make sure I have a page on my website that is specific for rustic farmhouse chairs. And as we're looking at some of this different monthly search volume here, what you wanna do is find keywords that you can target that have good average monthly search volume as well. So pretty strong monthly search volume, like distressed farmhouse table, reclaimed wood farm table. So we can find all of this data here just by coming to Moz and going to their keyword, their ranking keywords here. So it's another tool and I will link to all of these tools I'm talking about in the video description so you can find all of them, but this will help us find some of their top ranking keywords. Now, another tool I wanna to talk about is WordStream, their free keyword tool. So if we scroll down here, we can enter a 
website URL or a keyword to find suggestions. And this is going to be based on Google ads and Bing ads data. So for this, what I can do is come here and enter antique farmhouse.com, click on find my keywords. And what it's going to do is show 25 of 500 keywords for whatever website that we enter. So you can see here, it's showing search volume for some of these different keywords here. It's showing our average CPC for Google, and it's also showing for Bing, and then overall competition. So what you can do is click on email all my keywords. And if you click on this, you enter your email address. It's gonna say, are you researching keywords for your business or someone else? So I can say my business or my client, email my keyword list. So that will allow us to send some different keywords that we can actually use again for competitive analysis and just kind of competitor keyword research. So just another tool that you can use for free is WordStream. Now, last but not least, the two tools, and you probably already know if you watch a lot of my videos, but the Keyword Planner, the Google Ads Keyword Planner, and also the Microsoft Advertising Keyword Planner. So both of them will allow you to enter a website. So if we come here, we can enter our landing page, which in this case, we're gonna enter our competitor's website. We're gonna use the entire website. And then what we can do is click on Get Suggestions. And if we come back over to the Google Keyword Planner, we can do the same exact thing. Rather than starting with keywords, we're gonna start with a website. So we're gonna enter our competitor's website here. Use the entire website. Now the other thing that you can do is as you're looking up some of these different top pages. So for example, as I'm going to make sure I'm optimizing my wall decor page, making sure I'm targeting some of the keywords that they're targeting as well through my wall decor content, Let's just come here, copy this link address. I can come over and I can enter this exact page here. And then rather than using the entire website, I can use only this page. So click on get results. And that's gonna give me the most relevant keywords on this page. So it gives me 511 different keyword ideas. I get keywords by relevance. I get average monthly searches. So it's gonna rank them by relevance. And you can see here, all of these keywords are really highly related to what I wanna target on my own page for farmhouse wall decor. You can also add a filter and just say, I wanna make sure my keyword contains farmhouse. Click on apply just so it gets rid of some of those really broad keywords. And you can add another filter and say, I want average monthly searches to be at least 50 to get rid of some of these just 10 keywords and things like that that just have 10 or a little bit less average monthly searches every month. So that gives us 136 different keywords for a single page that we know that is driving a lot of traffic back to this website. So coming back over to the Microsoft Advertising Keyword Planner, don't mind my error message up here. This is an old account that I've actually just used basically to use the Keyword Planner. But if we enter our landing page here, so antiquefarmhouse.com, we scroll down, it's gonna give us ad group suggestions. So what you wanna do is click on Keyword Suggestions, but you can also use the ad group suggestions to kind of come up with some different content ideas. So farmhouse living room, farmhouse plan. So, and then if we click on it, you can see some of the keywords within this ad group. So it might give you some different content ideas as well. But if we come over here to keyword suggestions, it's gonna show us the most relevant keywords for antiquefarmhouse.com. I've already put a couple filters in here. So my average monthly searches is greater than or equal to 100. That just gets rid of some of these really low monthly search volume keywords. And then keywords to include farmhouse. So if I come through here, you can see all these different keywords that I can target. So it's giving us over 400 keywords here that we can look at. So there's a ton of different ideas by going to the Microsoft Advertising Keyword Planner, using the Google Ads Keyword Planner, and just entering our competitor's website. So basically, just to recap really quickly, so in order to find competitors, use the Moz True Competitor tool, enter your domain, you get two total searches per month. So make sure you use them wisely enter your own website, you can enter a competitor's website here too. Try to find some of these different competitor URLs. Once you have them, what you can do is either find more competitors by going to Google, searching for your top keywords, finding websites that are in the same exact niche as you. For example, Antique Farmhouse is in the same niche as me, whereas something like Amazon.com is not. So Amazon obviously carries all the same products that my website does and has a lot of the same pages that they're ranking for, but it's just so vast compared to my website that that's not your competitor. Your competitor is a website or a business in the same niche as you. If you're using keywordseverywhere.com, scroll over the traffic here and what you can do is view their top pages and you can use that data to try to find 
which pages they're ranking for, which pages are driving a lot of traffic, and what keywords are they ranking for with those pages. So you can click on any of these individual pages here and it will show you which keywords they're ranking for. And then you can also use a tool like Ubersuggest, enter your competitor's URL, you can find their top pages. You can also find some of their top organic search keywords through Ubersuggest, they'll give you some of that data as well. So if you're using some of these different tools like Keywords Everywhere, Ubersuggest, Moz, it's gonna help you find your competitors and their top pages. You can also use something like similarweb.com to enter your website or a competitor's website. You can use Buzzsumo to find some of their top shared content. You can use the free Moz ranking keywords tool that will give you their 50 top ranking keywords for antiquefarmhouse.com. And you can also enter other websites here as well. Now, what you really wanna do is make sure you're keeping track of all these keywords. And one thing you can do is use something like the Google Keyword Planner, enter either a specific page or the entire website, and you can export keywords at the very top. So just click here, export keywords to a CSV file or directly to Google Sheets. And you can use all this data as you are trying to rank higher for some of these top keywords that your competitors are already ranking for. And ultimately what you're trying to do is target all of these different keywords with your content. And for some of them, you might need to create their own separate page. For example, farmhouse kitchen wall decor. Targeting this keyword will help me rank higher for this keyword and this keyword and this keyword. So as you're targeting more and more keywords, you can use your competitors and use some of their successes to try to actually just copy exactly what they're ranking for. So this is a free way to do some competitor keyword research. Again, if you're looking for a lot more data, I would recommend a paid tool, SEMrush, Ahrefs, SpyFu, or even the paid version of Moz as well. Now, last but not least for this course, I wanna go over seven unique keyword research tips, just some different ways to look at coming up with keywords and building a keyword list so that you can continue to create great content for the people that are visiting your website. And if you follow this entire keyword research course and you are creating great content along the way, it's gonna help you increase your rankings in Google and other search engines and also share your content on different social media channels and all over the internet so you can drive more and more traffic. So to finish this course, seven unique keyword research tips. We're gonna get right into it. Tip number one is to research each keyword on your list to see what pages are currently ranking high on Google. So when you create a keyword research list, much like this one here, what you wanna do is take some of your individual keywords. For example, I'll take this keyword farmhouse bedding and you wanna see what is actually ranking on the first page of Google. And you can even look at other search engines as well like Bing, you can look at something like YouTube. But if we come over here to Google and we look at farmhouse bedding, you can see right here, so we have Amazon, we have Kohl's, we have Target, we have Bed Bath & Beyond, Wayfair. So we get down here to Piper Classics. All of these different pages here are just listing of products. So your e-commerce websites, when people click on them, they're gonna see a listing of products for sale related to farmhouse bedding. Now to give you some different examples, let's just say I wanna rank for the keyword types of flowers. So we come in here, we scroll down. You can see these are more list type posts. So right here, 50 most popular types of flowers. We have lists of 300 flower names, A to Z. Now the other thing is if you are using a tool like Keyword Surfer, as we scroll down here, you can actually see how many words are in each of these blog posts. So it helps you get an idea of how long you should probably write a blog post in order to rank high. At the very least, you should see some of these as a threshold. You don't need to write a 19,000 word article, but you probably do need to have at least 2,000, at least 1,000 words to rank on the first page for a search term like this. Now, last but not least, let's just look up something like best travel backpack. You're gonna see here, all of these examples are a list of some of the most popular travel backpacks rather than something like your standard e-commerce listing of products. So understanding what ranks for each keyword could help guide what types of content or what types of pages you're gonna create on your website so that you can rank high as well. Now tip number two is gonna to be to focus on long tail keywords if you want to rank for a popular short tail keyword. So we're gonna come over here to the Google Keyword Planner to show some of these examples. And let's just say I wanna rank for the keyword farmhouse decor. So if we scroll down here, you can see this has average monthly searches, almost 91,000. But as we scroll down here, these are all very popular keywords. But what you wanna do is come down here and get into this 
about 300 to 500 range and look at all of these different long tail keywords so something like farmhouse fall mantle decor farmhouse shutter wall decor so all of these are different keywords that we can target on our website and it's going to be much easier to rank for something like farmhouse entryway decor farmhouse lemon kitchen decor it's going to be much easier to rank for these keywords and there's still plenty of average monthly searches to drive traffic to our website and what's going to happen in the long run is it becomes easier to rank for something like farmhouse decor on google if we are targeting keywords like farmhouse shutter decor farmhouse easter decorations so these are all different keywords we want to target and the best way to to actually rank for that short tail keyword is to focus on some of the long tail variations next is going to be tip number three and i've gone over this in the past but in case you're not doing it already so keyword mapping you can organize your keywords by mapping them to website pages so if we come down here to our keyword list again we're looking at all these different examples one of the things you might want to do is say okay for farmhouse bar stools what is the page on my website that i'm actually targeting this keyword with so in this case i could come over to my website and we can come to our farmhouse bar stools page and this is the actual page that is targeting this keyword so what I could do is copy this URL and then all you want to do is enter it here in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or wherever you're actually organizing your keywords and you want to do this for all of these different keywords that we're targeting and what it helps you do is in the long run as you are targeting a lot of different keywords especially some of these long tail keywords here so let's just say I'm creating a page for farmhouse kitchen wall decor I can create a separate URL for this individual keyword than I would for farmhouse wall decor. So it allows you to target a lot of different keywords by actually mapping the pages on your website that are targeting those short tail and long tail keywords that you wanna rank for. And to take this one step further, as we are focusing on some of these different long tail keywords, so for example, if I come to Google, I search farmhouse bar stools, you can see a lot of these down here are some different types of long tail keywords. So black farmhouse bar stools, white farmhouse bar stools, backlist farmhouse bar stools those can all be separate categories on my website and then what i can do is just make sure i'm mapping the pages on my website to those other keywords so that i can continue to rank for them as well okay so next is going to be tip number four tip number four i'm going to do pretty quickly but enter your top competitors into the google keyword planner if you go to spyfoo.com enter your own website here it's going to come up with some of your organic competitors so you can take your top organic competitor here and enter them directly into the Google Keyword Planner. You don't need to create an account or anything to get this page. You can also use the true competitor tool through Moz. So this is a pro tool, but if you do create a free Moz account, they will give you two search queries every single month where you can enter a domain and it will show you all of your top competitors and you'll find who you're actually competing with. And then all you need to do is go to the Keyword Planner and enter that website directly into the Google Keyword Planner and you can find a lot of their top keywords and it gave me 261 keyword ideas. So I can go through this and try to find some of the keywords that I'm not targeting already that antiquefarmhouse.com is ranking for. So it gives me some different opportunities to try to get some traffic. All you need to do is when you're searching, instead of starting with keywords, start with a website, enter the website here, use the entire site and click on get results and it's that simple. Okay, so next is tip number five. So if you are running a Google Ads campaign, what you can do is use your search terms report for more ideas. So go into an individual ad group if you're running a Google Ads campaign. So you can see I have a search campaign here. I'm gonna be using this for a lot of tutorials soon. But let's just say I come into this farmhouse quilts ad group. So I need to find more long tail keywords related to farmhouse quilts. So what I can do is I'm looking at the last 30 days, click on my search terms report, and what you wanna do is find search terms and rank them by clicks and impressions. So as we see here, what are driving the most impressions? So country quilts, country quilt sets. You can see a lot of things for king size. There's gonna be queen size down here, twin size. So right here, feathered farm quilts. That's a keyword I've never targeted before, so it's something I can try to target on my website. Vintage farmhouse quilts, so another long tail keyword variation. Modern farmhouse quilts. So you can get a bunch of different ideas here and things that I'm not already targeting. And that's basically what you wanna do. So country patchwork quilts, I'm sure farmhouse patchwork quilts is also a popular keyword. So it allows you to find more and more keywords to target with the content on your website. So if you are running a Google ads campaign, use that search terms report to see what is actually triggering your advertisements because it's gonna be very relevant keywords, especially in my case, I'm targeting a lot of phrase match keywords so with phrase match, 
it's going to find some very similar keywords and you're going to see all of them in the search terms report so that gives you a lot of different ideas for when you are optimizing for search engine optimization as well as your google ads campaigns okay tip number six is going to be a very quick one so use your top blog posts to expand on your content ideas so for this example i'm actually going to use my website beachfrontdecor.com so with this two of my top five blog posts 101 beach theme bathroom ideas 101 beach theme bedroom ideas so you can see right here this post alone drives a ton of traffic every single month it's based on all the other pages on my website this is one of the more popular pages now a ton of traffic maybe isn't isn't accurate but uh it gives me an idea to be able to say okay 101 beach theme kitchen ideas 101 beach theme living room ideas 101 beach theme entryway ideas porch ideas patio ideas so all of these different keywords that I can target, seeing what is already ranking, as you go through your keyword list and you do create your keyword map, you might say, okay, the page I created for this specific keyword is doing very well. Let me copy that strategy for the other content that I'm creating. So number six, using your top blog post to expand on your different content ideas and expand on the keywords you're targeting based on what content is working for you. Tip number seven, and last but not least, so sometimes when you're building this large keyword list, the thing that we kind of forget to do is make sure we're creating high quality content for all these different keywords. Now in this case, content is going to be product listing pages, basically e-commerce website product pages. So if I'm trying to rank for something like farmhouse bedroom furniture, then what I want is a huge selection of different types of farmhouse bedroom furniture sets, headboards, all sorts of things that you're gonna find in a bedroom. So you wanna make sure, for example, if I'm targeting the keyword farmhouse bar stools, it's a very popular keyword. If I'm sending traffic from my Google Ads campaign to that page, if I'm trying to rank with this page, what I need to do is make sure that I have a ton of different subcategories here, a lot of different unique products, make sure I have really good product descriptions, and make sure people come to my page knowing that this is going to be the best resource on the internet for farmhouse bar stools. So a lot of times we create these large keyword lists and we forget that we really need to create this high quality content for every single keyword we're targeting. And sometimes it might take us several days, a week, several weeks to even complete a piece of content or complete a product listing page so that we're ranking high in Google. So don't focus on saying, okay, I need to target 10,000 keywords. You need to focus on saying today I'm going to target farmhouse entryway and I'm going to make sure I create the best resource on the entire internet so that I rank high on Google and other search engines. So number seven, make sure you're focusing on content creation, page optimization, landing page optimization, because it's more important than just building a list of a ton of short tail and long tail keywords. Okay, so this is the end of the course. Thank you for watching all of my different videos. Hopefully you found everything helpful and you are ready to create your keyword list you are ready to start creating content for those keywords and the more you follow the top keywords that people are actually searching and looking for and the more you understand search intent the better your website is going to be because you are going to be creating content that solves the problems that your customers are having so if you have any questions about this keyword research course please leave them in the comment section thank you for watching today and make sure you subscribe to the surfside ppc youtube channel